It's real scary and ominous tonight, folks, uh, but we are here, uh, at least th those of us that have managed to show up and not be uh, harassed by our parole officers, like uh, the rest of the wanted crowd, they all have good reasons for not being here, but uh, uh, we're going to dedicate tonight's episode to Captain Strange Life, whose computer is broke, so hopefully he'll be able to see this sometime in the near future. Uh, welcome to all of our fans out there in fossil land it's good to see you tonight we're going to be joined soon by spinner rack studios good old dave will be joining us from uh, colorado we uh right now we have michael taylor hello michael we have fireball good to see you lead paint and uh myers in the audience tonight hello <laughs> yeah we are the body <laughs> and uh what was that from what movie is that <clears throat> we were of the body. Well, I don't That's know. that Star Trek episode. Oh, uh, right. Where it's the Landrew. Yeah. Right, 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 right. The Fab Four, Three and Breen. Michael Dodd was good enough to join us back when I thought I had about 10 fossils joining us tonight. It's a good thing we got contacted him. Hello, Maranya. I hope you've enjoyed the intro. A little bit of pre gill music there for you yeah that just goes to show you how dangerous that uh, that alarm is it could blow up the whole planet so i just want to point out that i told jambo in his video the other day i said run yeah. from the iron bream yes and he ran all the way to georgia georgia yep just want to point that out got involved in a fiddle battle i hear right. we're going to uh, get a go right to michael dodd he's going to start us off and so, take it away, Mr. Dodd. Gotcha. Well, we're going to start out with this. The big toy box at Sears. I'm, Very nice. I'm fighting, uh, trying to orient myself and the glare, so it's always fun. I have that under control now with my videos, but uh, the streams are a different thing. Okay, we're going to look at some Hamilton's Invaders pieces. Here is the ad. Whoa. There we go. This is from the 1964 Sears Christmas catalog wish book. Right. And uh, they had a 17 piece set and a 12 piece set. And my mom and dad got me the 17 piece set when I was five years old for Christmas in 1964. And cool. I still have several pieces from that set. I'm not going to show those pieces in this. I bought some more different pieces off of eBay in recent years. But uh, I also have a 12-piece set. If you guys want to see that, you know, I've got a video about that. Well, Michael, you've seen some of my uh, cowboys and soldiers. Uh, are they all made by the same company? Or, or can I pick up one and look at it and I go, that's a Hamilton? Or am I missing uh, this something? Was actually made by Remco. Okay. Uh, they there were different companies that made the play sets, mostly Marts, but uh, a few were made by Remco, and a few were made by a company that mostly did cheaper things called uh, MPC. Mm. But but these particular ones are Remco. Okay. Here's one of the soldiers. This is uh, there are six different. Uh, poses of the soldiers this is a guy with a uh, machine a submachine gun and uh, they call these guys blue defenders and there's the fellow with the bazooka and these are a little bit bigger than uh, your standard uh, army men that you're going to see from mpc and marks these are like the ones that are standing are like three inches tall mm. here's the guy with the bayonet when did Remco go out of business? 
you know, I'm not sure. It might have been as early as the the late '60s. I'm not, I yeah. don't really know. Yeah, and what happened to Kenner? Or when did Kenner go out of business? Was that in the so, late '70s? They lasted for a while, I think. Okay. Here's the dude throwing the grenade. And here's the guy with the uh, rifle. And these are great figures, you know. They had uh, good quality at Remco. Is this the Christmas of 63 or 64? 64. 64. Here is the fellow with the pistol. I suppose he's an officer. And then we have some vehicles here. This is the dwarf tank. Wow. <laughs> And it's got uh, the pilot in there. You, you know, you can take those guys out. The guns fire. It's still got one of the uh, shells in it there. Hmm. Very nice. And it's it's got a spring there in the uh, barrel that uh, fires the missiles or shells. And it's got a pull string. These uh, move by pull string. And... You know, I mean, I really like to pull that out and, and check it out. And I've done it before. I know they worked, or at least they worked the last time I saw them and fool with them. But uh, those motors get old. And if they ever go out while the pull string is all the way out, then it's, you're just stuck with it, man. It's, it's always extended. So from now on, these are like museum pieces for me. They just sit on my shelf. Uh, this is the uh, Mosquito Jeep. And it has uh, the little white pilot guy in there. Mm. And even those guys have great sculpts. And uh, they've got uh, the cool little stickers, you know, and the iconic Hamilton's Invaders science fiction. Uh, slogan there and there's the pull string for that one and uh we have a laser pistol wow by remco now they did uh like at least three different ones of these this is the hamilton's invaders one it's got the little sticker there now this takes batteries there are no batteries in it because it's very heavy with the batteries, and I, I took them out and never did put any more in. But when, you, when it has batteries and you pull the trigger, it makes a buzzing sound, and it's like a little flashlight, but it has uh, a thing you can turn here to change the color of the light. It goes through the different color lenses. It's got a little sight there, you know. And Now, they made a Star Trek version of this, and they also made a generic version of it. They oh, also yeah, Rimco had, made those really weird Star Trek toys, didn't they? That looked like nothing in the. Do you have any of that stuff? I don't have any of the Star Trek stuff. It, it's nope. hilarious looking. Here is the signature piece for the Hamilton's Invaders, the horrible Hamilton. <laughs> Good grief. And uh, when you see these on eBay, they're oftentimes missing uh, noses and eyes and have breaks and. No. The strings are extended, and the pull string motors don't work anymore. But uh, this one, as far as I know, still works. It walks, but when you pull the string, if, if you're just holding it in the air, it doesn't retract all the way. If you've got it sitting on a smooth floor, it will actually walk across and, you know, retract all the way, unless the dreaded doomsday hour when that motor finally goes out. Then you're stuck with uh, a toy with a fully retracted string that does not display too well. Hmm. And since I don't play with these things, I display them. I don't care, you know, to take a chance and maybe mess up the uh, function of them. So anyway, that's the main dude there, that horrible Hamilton. And even damage, those sell for quite a bit. Here is the fan-made patch that I bought off of eBay. And, you know, it was cheap and it looked cool. So I grabbed it, and here are a couple of boxed items. They had the, uh, the, the life-size or kid-size weapons. Here's the grenade pistol, and it's complete in the box, and the box is pretty nice. 
These yeah. box uh, weapons are pretty expensive. And there's what the ends of the box looks like. And here's the uh, here's the back. It gives you all the you know instructions, and it, you can even send off and have it repaired or order more grenades. You know, and probably not now, though. <laughs> probably not now. I, I wouldn't count yeah. on doing it now. And here then is the boxed uh, helmet. The blue, the metallic blue one. Oh, cool. Goodness. Made a black one, too. And this is uh, an exceptional piece in that it still has the uh, the cardboard insert, and uh, the sticker is still present. It's faded, but it's still present. And uh, the goggles aren't dented and messed up like most of them that you see for sale. You seldom ever see these in the box. Mostly they're loose. And kids played with them, and the goggles are pitted and uh, just really screwed up, you know. And it had a chin strap, and oftentimes that's missing. And this one is complete, though. It's it's uh, not bad. And I believe that's all I have for my first round. Thanks, Lead Paint. Yeah, that was fantastic stuff. Uh, it, you could get a jumpsuit, sew that little patch on, put that helmet on. And you're good to go for a little pretend movie or or drama or whatever. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Very Vader looking. All right. Well, I'll show a few things. I'll start with a poster. I have been uh, trading with a fellow YouTuber called Why Not. Some of you may recognize him. Why Not uh, artwork. He does a lot of good character work of the monsters, you know, your Frankensteins, your werewolves, stuff like that. Uh, I told him I would like to have the creature from the Black Lagoon. And so we worked out a really good trade. And I can't wait to get a frame for this. They're a good 18 inches long. Now check out the... Uh, the swimmer at the top, just like in the movie. It's K. Yeah. And even this great, these great little plants and stuff. Uh, just a just a really great. I hope he gets to view this episode and see that. Uh, I think that's outstanding. Uh, it's why not. Uh, he uh, he sells these. He'll sell. Uh, I think he'll do commissions for you. So check him out on his channel sometime when you when you get a chance. Uh, let's take it to the year 1949. Here is Blondie and Dagwood with their dog Daisy. Man. This is one of the they call better little books because they're taller. And I'll show you, uh, the interiors look very nice. So, so anyway, 1949, that's a very recent pickup. And uh, I'll show a kid colt, but I'm anxious to see what some of you guys have, and I'll do another round later. Here's kid colt 149, drawn by uh, Herb Trippy. For Herb Trimp, I've heard it both ways, <laughs> and uh, inked by John Severin. Should have been George Bell. Yes. Well, George I'm, was busy running other things. So. I, I'm pretty sure it's Trimpy. Um, Could um, be. Someone that I, actually met him said it was Trimpy. Then. Okay. I'm glad I led with that because uh, yeah. all my life it was Trimp. Yeah, because who would ever dream that it's Trimpy? I mean, exactly. it's like Trimp, you know? Yeah. I'm going to vote for Trimpy. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll try to say both, but I, I yeah, 85%, I agree. Probably I just lean to Trimpy. So, all right. Uh, Gratu or Eric, either one of you would like to go? Go ahead, Dr. Orloff. 
Okay. All right. Let's see what I, 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 I might show things that I've shown on my channel, but I don't know. I just got stuff here. Um, did anything come out today on comic book day? And those of you that, uh, this is a progress report of the Houston con from 1978. Look, they have uh, Gil Kane there. Great uh, show. That's all you need. I mean, look at, they've got Frank. <laughs> Now it's Frank Bruner. I used to, as a kid, I thought it was Brunner, but I guess Bruner is the German pronunciation. They've got Rick Baker, Ray Harryhausen, Jeanette Kahn, the pretty publisher from DC Comics, will be our guest to talk about. <laughs> you don't talk about wow. women that way anymore. No. <laughs> the pretty publisher, as opposed to the Battle Axe. Frankie yeah. Thomas, uh, the one and only original Tom Corbett Space Cadet. Okay, so so the guy that played Tom Corbett, Kerry Gamble, lived in, uh, I guess still does live in Fort Worth, so that wasn't that was just a four-hour drive. And, you know, they, it's back then they had, you know, they would play 16-millimeter uh, films or whatever in the, the very different time, model con. No, there's nothing about cosplay because the only women that would attend a convention in 1978, like, Velma, you know, or like 900 pound versions of Velma or um, or there'd be some rich guy, you know, that looked like Warren Worthington that was a comic collector and he'd have a, occasionally you'd see a girl that's there because she's dating a rich guy that's a comic collector. Or or somebody's wife to make sure the guy doesn't spend too much money, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just, it was... Okay, so I found these cardboard... Um, I guess from the 30s from Warner. Now they're different companies. This is, it says a Paramount star, Carol Lombard. Are, are, I don't think I've ever seen a TV co hair hanging out. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a TV commercial for Hamilton's Invaders. Is there one that we can find on YouTube? I think there is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I collect those old toy commercials. I just don't recall. Um, the closest thing I could think as far as in pop culture to that time period would be the Outer Limits. Do you think that's what influenced those toys? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. It, it uh, probably was a, just in the zeitgeist then because you had all the science fiction with the invading uh, giant bugs and stuff like the yeah. Sith, uh, monster. Right. Well, the closest to that, you know, military fighting them, uh, to me, the, the futuristic kind of military would be a few years later with the ufo tv show yeah um paramount may west so i don't remember where i got these there's no telling here's my um childhood i'd show comics but i don't have any new comics you know i don't have any opportunity i'm just showing you stuff i found my childhood wolfman glow in the dark instructions wow um i mean so it shows you how to put together a Wolfman. And so, and oh, and then you just showed cre the creature. Here's the the creature. This is early '70s or whenever they did the, uh, you know, it's the '70s Aurora logo. But you know, I'm a few years younger, so I wasn't buying these in the '60s. I was getting them on the reissue when they tried to, uh, you know, do the glow in the dark. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. This was sent to me by Mike McCarthy uh, probably over 20 years ago. It says, unpublished by Tundra, Stokes did his own zombie boy. I'm not sure I know what that means, but um, I guess Tundra is a publisher. So he sent me this, this cool little... Uh, Oh, oh, yeah. Cadavera was his character, and I guess someone else did Zombie. Oh, I guess, I guess the artist Stokes, when uh, on Zombie Boy, he drew it. He drew the Zombie Boy character, but everything else is done by Mike McCarthy out of Memphis. He's now more of a filmmaker than a wow. cartoonist, but he used to do a lot of really cool comics. But now he's he makes movies. <coughs> Here's a little uh, advertisement from a comic, I guess was in a comic store window or supposed to be for um, 
Van Perella. It's got Mike Kaluta art. I normally shy away from any th any Vampirella that's not Warren, but you know if there's a Vampirella that has Dave Stevens or Kaluta art, then you know I and then there, you know it's just all this little advertising stuff on the back. Uh, I think these were from my friend Ryan, who had some Erie publications back when no one really knew what Erie publications was, but we just thought they were amazing. And I guess I didn't have the ones he had, so I must have made color copies, or he made color copies for me so that I could frame them. But so I, I, I have some of these. I don't know if I have all of these now. I think I have that one. I don't know. Anyway, that might I don't know. There's some horrible tape pull on that one, but I don't know if that's one I I just don't remember the origin of why I have these. Um is there anything good that came out today, like some reproduction old comic or something? No. So that's like, is that like the new trend? Is that really selling well, all these reproductions of old comics? Uh, decently well. I mean, DC is doing most of them and not, nothing they're putting out is selling. So, Well, I, I was talking to the guy that, that runs Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona, and he was telling me all these ones that had been put out. And he's, he's like putting them in a pile for me. So now that I've been paid the last day of the month, I'm going to call call them up and and get them sent to me. But uh, I'm just surprised at how many they're doing of these uh, reproduction uh, old comics. And so I'm. Well, I, I think what they're doing smart is doing them intact, ads and all. Right. Kind of gives that a you know kitsch factor that I think maybe might appeal to I'm not sure who they're going after because certainly not the audience they're courting. No, no, definitely not. Well, I don't know. They try to time it with <clears throat> pop like like they put out um Marvel Family to try to time it with the Black Adam movie. Um but yeah, but uh, that's the only one though because they've done you know Detective 2738. Yeah. Uh Superman in action number one. Um, um, probably they're hoping speculators will pick them up that can't afford the real comics. And then after a month, they'll all be up to 50, $60 all slabbed and some <laughs> stupid plastic. Um, I couldn't be on last week cause we were shopping last minute for Thanksgiving stuff. Um, but have you guys heard about Guandanaland and the controversy with that? Yeah. No, I, I'm oh, well, I Guandanaland, someone at Amazon was pissed at him. Because I guess they said this is copywritten, and he proved to them that it wasn't copywritten, and they they just were refusing to be wrong. He suspects that. I just is just what I've read on Facebook. Anyway, Amazon is refusing to carry or or, or do uh, his stuff anymore. So now he's having. They still have a few books they printed that they'll sell to you, but once those are gone, Wandana Land's completely off Amazon, which is evil anyway. But now he's going having he and his friend. It's apparently it's a maybe a two guy operation. They're they're having to redo every single book, um, and, and do it on Barnes and Noble's website. Barnes and Noble also will print books to order, but they're going to be more expensive. And apparently with Amazon, they would automatically give you an ISBN BN number, but now he has to pay for the ISBN numbers. I think they give you ten free. So for every so they're going to be more expensive because Barnes and Noble is more expensive and they have to pay for the um, ISBN numbers. So gradually they're going to try to, but he has thousands of books and now he's gradually like bringing them over and, and taking requests. Which ones should I do first? Anyway, it's a big mess. But now Barnes and Noble is going to be how you get these old reprints of public domain comics. Um, is um, and then I, I I looked this up. I don't know if you watch watch my show or not. This this hotel is still there. So I really think you know if anyone lives in St. Louis, which I guess isn't that far from me, it would be really cool to just paste these around in their lobby. I wouldn't do it. I'd get arrested. Right. But yeah. this, they still exist. Just imagine you could be on CNN as some hate crime guy or something. But I just think it's funny that hotel is still around. And those ads, those little things exist. Um, 
what else? Uh, this is of recent vintage, but it you know looks old. It's a uh, Frankenstein, you know, because it has a stupid UPC code on it, so it can't be you know too vintage. Hey Gratu, uh, here's one. Do you uh, do you recommend a channel called Comic Book Historians? Oh yeah. Oh, did I recommend it on my channel? Yeah, because they. That's where you learn to pronounce a lot of these names. I, I think I heard someone, one of these old guys say Herb Trimpey on there too, that confirmed it because what it, it's a good channel. It's a great channel, but what they're, they're putting up, they have a long playlist that they put up. We were talking about this on the show a couple of weeks ago because uh, Paulo remembered what the name of the channel was, but they have, um, in the late nineties or very early two thousands, somebody sat down with all the, great surviving people um there's joe kubert's interviewed uh you know will eisner marie severin ramona fredone huh. uh, um every everybody that that you know um that was alive that was important in the golden age and in the silver age and they just talked to them and that's where i, I get some anecdotes about you know marie severin really loved doing the but but like John Buscema, they talked to him and he says, you know, I, I stopped reading comics when I was like 12. I, it was just a job to me. I don't love comics. And, and I really hated to do modern stories because I don't like drawing planes and airplane uh, and cars and stuff. So that's why he was really thrilled with doing the old barbarian stories because he didn't have to draw modern machinery. It's fascinating. And that's what I've always felt is important is when you have a primary source, you need to interview them. If you've got a great a grandfather that was in World War II and he's 90, you need to sit down and record him because I, I wish I had done that with my father with the stories about the Korean War and the Vietnam War. You've got to get this because otherwise it's just going to be you trying to remember the story to tell to your kids or whatever. And then they're going to remember even less. And after several generations, all those memories are gone. So it's important to record history. And at the school I used to teach at years ago, the school went back 100 years. Whenever there was a, a, an old alumni, I had to get them there and, and record them. What was it? What were the dances like in 1957? And this lady telling me I was standing right here on the playground when I heard that Buddy Holly had his plane had gone down and, and talked to me, you know, about how she misbehaved in this classroom that I was teaching in and who the teacher was. It's invaluable to record it. And that's what Comic Historians has done. You, you, if you have, I, uh, I think last weekend I sat and I recorded every single one of those interviews because I don't trust YouTube. I mean, they could wipe everything, you know, if, 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 because I don't, I don't trust any of these tech companies. They could just wipe everything off of YouTube arbitrarily, you know, if they don't like how some election went or something. And um, so it's important to preserve it. It's great that it's on YouTube, but I don't trust that. Stuff's on YouTube. Stuff even on your phone, you know. Um, if, you, if you have, like, pictures <laughs> that you've saved from, uh, you know, of Hunter Biden's antics, then all of a sudden you go, because my wife's had, had this happen, all of a sudden they disappear from your cloud because they, they're, they, they're going in and making sure all of that's gone. So they, they can wipe stuff off your phone. It's, it's good to preserve stuff any way you can in a hard copy form. So I have this old technology they don't make anymore, but you can still get blank DVDRs. And so I like to record YouTube and, and record it onto DVDR and preserve it because it could all go, um, and uh, and I like to present. And those interviews are great. You got to watch them. It's um, it's just fascinating. Um, it's it's all. In fact, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm. I'll show you on my next turn who the people are because uh, I think I'm going too long. But then we don't have many people. But <laughs> but um, <laughs> hold on one sec. What is it? Comic book historians. I'll just I'll read I'll read to you real quick who some of these people are that you can watch interviews with. My only problem with is I, with it is I wish it was uncut, but you can see there's just for time and for people's attention span, they've made it very 
streamlined and they've they, it's not the complete interview and i don't uh, i want all of it i want every second of it but that's just how i am um comic book historians have you guys watched this mm. Any of you? i may have because i i watch tons of stuff and i may just not remember their name right okay i'm on comic book historians playlist it's the david armstrong interview playlist so okay. you start with john Busema, john ramita senior talk for 49 minutes marie severin martin flitchhawk i don't remember who he is then sullivan in 19 i don't remember but you find out who they are and yeah. some of them have the most interesting accents thick italian accents <laughs> these people you don't know what they joe kubert was fascinating um some of these Italian artists, you know, that, that are Italian descent. There's one guy you can barely understand him his accents. And, and Jack Davis is on here. He's great with his thick, thick Southern accent. It's thick. Uh, Will Eisner, Nick Carty, Joe Simon, Chuck Quidera, Irv Novick, Jim Mooney, Joe Kubert, Harry Lampert, Erwin Hassan, Carmine Infantino, John Broom, Julia Schwartz. That goes on for like 35 minutes. Murphy Anderson, Joe Giella, Marv Levy, Erwin Donenfeld, Ramona Fredone, Cy Berry, Rick Estrada, Paul Levitz. I mean, he talks to Arnold Drake, George Tesca, uh, Jerry Robinson. And, and they're um, they're uh, all, um, you know, st they're probably all in their 70s at the time. And I think almost all of them are gone now. So there's not going to be any more interviews with them. So. And what about Gil Kane, man? <laughs> uh, oh, unfortunately, he was not in there. Uh, but I wonder if there are Gil Kane interviews on I, YouTube. Maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm sure they are. I'm You've sure got to admit, Graphic Man, sometimes Gil Kane it, it will knock it out of the park he with an draws amazing a, cover. He draws a good Spider-Man, yeah. <laughs> I mean. No, but I, I totally does. agree with everything you're saying about recording everything. Uh I'm slowly trying to get everything over onto Rumble because I do think, yeah, we need it as many platforms as we is, can get. The problem is you become obsessive compulsive and then your yeah. friends and wife start really resenting it that you're constantly recording and you have piles of DVDs and you become a nut. But if you look at yourself as a museum curator, that it sounds more dignified. Yes. Which is all what we all are. We all have our own private museums. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it just sounds better. Put that down on your resume that you're also a museum curator in addition to that. And by the way, speaking of that Star Trek episode, I've always wondered, it was called Return of the Archons, right? I so think all so. my life I thought Archons, that's a Star Trek term. And then, you know, I meet my wife and she's talking about Archons and the Bible and, and you would be able to help us. What is an Archon actually that they were referring to? It's some kind of, is it some kind of half- God, half person kind of thing. What is an archon? Do you know? I always thought it was a visitor, but go ahead, Eric. A visitor. Okay. I don't know. I thought you would be the expert being a no, kind of a not on not on an archon. Okay, I'll look it up. Anyway, I, I've gone on way too long because I never talked to anybody. And no, I it's been good stuff. And I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad they asked the question. So, and I gotta, sh I gotta grow that beard back because I look like a, a, a freaking old washerwoman. I looked it's horrible. And now I remember why I had the beard. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and Michael Taylor has figured out why I like Gil Kane Spider Man. That's exactly right. So. Oh, <laughs> he did some good Wonder Woman. It seems like I was looking at some Wonder Woman covers the other week or on an episode a couple days ago that were pretty good. Um. It, what you both meant to say was, if he drew it, it was good. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I completely agree. I, I love Gil Kane, but it is weird. I, I just wonder, was he a short guy? And that's the view he had all the time. Because it's not like a sexual fetish to look up no, people's noses. No, I don't think. a coke fiend. <clears throat> I think Gil wanted to make sure <clears throat> that he had that <clears throat> down pat. And that anybody can do it, I can do it, and he did it, and he just overdid it. But no um, one else did that angle. It's like an angle for yeah, a dwarf. Or because a, it's not very flattering. And you want your hero to look dynamic, and you want the, the, the woman to look like a wonderful starlet. And let's face it, there's 
parts of our body, like our elbows and our nostrils, which aren't very well, you have pleasing a point to the there. eye. Yeah. You have a point I didn't think of. When you want someone to look heroic, like in a movie, you know, like uh, Citizen Kane, they would do that. You know, they'd have the camera down low looking right. up. In fact, he designed a way to cut away the floorboards where the camera is actually down under the floor, like parallel with the floorboard. So you're, you can't get any lower looking up. So so uh, you're looking up to like a hero, like John Wayne. And so the upward look. But, you know, the, he, he really was fetishizing the nostril thing. I've got to admit, I love him, but he just <laughs> was a little. Uh, well, yeah. and, and Eric, Eric has early on figured out that I just think he's a little overrated and he has gone with it in a, in a big way. Well, so. see, I would <laughs> rather if I was going after an artist for, you know, it's like, um, what's this, uh, maybe Howard Chaikin when he's, slacking or walt simonson when he's slacking it's just kind of too sketchy although i like both artists yeah i would but gil kane i i i think he's above you know that i don't know i mean some artists are a little too sketchy i like and there's a certain something i like where it's realistic but also cartoonish and that's why i like um uh, you know, Marie Severin's art, because there's always that feeling of whimsy with it, and Ramona Fredone, and uh, the, the Captain Marvel, the real Captain Marvel art, yeah. you know, C.C. Beck, it's, 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 it, it's just in between realism and, and cartoonishness, and to me, the comic book should still have a little cartooniness. I, I, that's what I like. No, it's fine. So, anyway. Now, Eric, are you ready, or... Michael right. has enough for a couple more rounds, so but if you want to go, we'll let you go. Yeah, go ahead and go. First, I want to yeah, interject a little real world for a second. The the a guy was recruited to be to play quarterback in Florida, but he posted a, a video where he's singing along to a rap song, and that word was part of the song. Well, Florida took back the scholarship and basically kicked him out of school. A Florida quarterback that was still there just got arrested for child pornography. He was suspended. Oh, dear. <laughs> but he's still there. Just let you know what's important. And now back to comics. <laughs> Marvel feature. Yeah. The, whole oh. thing, the, the thing's just trying to get home. That's a that's a great one, Jim Starlin. Yeah, Avengers four, hey, hey. three. Uh, Jesse Frank Robbins is how I kind of got introduced to uh, Eric because I mentioned him and Eric commented and we started chatting about Frank. Frank, <laughs> we we both agree he's an acquired taste. Yeah, and uh, like the detective comics that he wrote. And honestly, now what I, I mean when I think of the Invaders, I think of Frank Robbins. Yeah, I mean it's just now it's comic book history, and I have no problem with him. But boy, did I have a problem when I was buying them off the rack. Yeah, I see that. But there was something about his art being a little different from the modern comics that made it feel like maybe a little like the gold golden age because it was yeah. a little different. It might yeah. have been, but it just like I said, it just. I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, I, I know. What after you mean. seeing it, Gil, like, guys like Gil Kane, who I'd already fallen in love with as an artist, John Buscema, and honestly, at the time when I would see stuff like Frank Robinson, Jack Kirby, because I was I hadn't I hadn't been in the hobby long enough to appreciate the art of storytelling versus just the you know the sequential art. And admittedly, Kirby had had lost a step by the time he got back to Marvel. But yeah, now I said I, I you know. I'll 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 take Frank Robbins all day long. Yeah. Oh, by the way, in the comments, uh, as far as the lifespan of DVDRs, I started doing it over twenty years, and those DVDs are fine. And I mean, I've heard they're not going to last, but am I going to last another twenty years? As long as I I don't know, it's just a sickness. I maybe they'll all disintegrate, and but so uh, will I. 
Hello, Froggy. Yeah, comic book frog. Maybe I'll hit, maybe I'll keep the book in front of my face and dedicate one pixel size finger just for you. Uh oh. I won't do that. Uh, we don't need to see his pinky. <laughs> I tell you, like I said if you guys hey, haven't Gambo. seen, if you haven't seen the freakishly long fingers of our uh, of our friend at the Geeky Puppet Show, it is unsettling. It's bigger than the one in the Mad Magazine cover. The Daredevil 180. Let's see, DC Comics Presents. Forgot the number. Here's number 22. Comet. It's possible that Frank wrote the story in this issue of Detective. Bernie writes some cover there, man. Uh, could be. Could oh, be. Yeah. <laughs> that was around that era. Yeah. Um, here's 540. Yeah, nice. very nice. Uh, Dr. Strange. 34. There's Eternals number three. Yeah, for you, know, for you key collectors like Gratu out there, this is the first Circe. Oh, yeah. Because I know that's I know that's important. So so what what's happened <coughs> in your store with Eternals prices after that turd of a movie? <laughs> Um, <laughs> no reason to no reason to do the bang but has anyone seen the black panther movie not second one no it's just just now getting to the theater here in two nights uh, a little romance for y'all that's a nice cover i that's, really uh, like the hair there john senior yeah that's my wife wanted to dye her hair that way where it's <laughs> um uh, number 63. <laughs> Very nice. She looks like she's related to the watcher or something, the, the maid. FF 104. Nice. Let's see. Forbidden Tales of the Dark Mansion. Oh, yeah, I've got that one. It's a great one. Love that old run. A few more left. Shame that Steve isn't here. Are these new new uh, are these new acquisitions or is this just from your old collection of no I've got so I've got so many books that I haven't read and I've got those just almost two long boxes of romance that I haven't gotten to yet. I'll just read a little here and there. And I, I am continuously picking up new stuff, but this is stuff that's been around. Yeah. Um speaking of uh John Ramita Sr., but oh. once again, if there was any knock on his art, the heads were as literally as big as the torsos on some of his women. Yeah. yeah. That could be J. Jonah Jameson with his back to us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's the deal with the way that Ditko drew hair, you know, like on Harry Osborne and Norman Osborne? Is that a did you ever see people with hair that way in real life? Uh, no. You know where you know where I'm seeing it now. A lot of college basketball players. Oh, okay. And well, I was heard it that, out. I heard that Ditko drew all his characters wow. to look Polish because he was from a Polish uh, Polish descent. That's very yeah. cool. Art. That's I've all I got for this around round. a Polish community. Uh, yeah, I I could spoil the movie for you, Gratu. I haven't seen it, but I've I've pieced together. Oh, I know all. everything that happens in yeah. it because I've watched all these hateful reviews. I I know it's uh, crappy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm just wondering. Oh, I have the answer on Archons now. Okay, because I mean, I I know that you know it's Archon is some word, and it's apparently from Gnosticism, and I'm not really. My wife goes, uh, what do you know about Gnosticism? Are you that just explains why I don't, yeah. 
It's yeah. not in the Bible. You don't. Right. Okay. Well, I've always heard, you know, like the prisoner, people say it's a Gnostic TV show. So, you know, like what is, so I love the prisoner. What is Gnosticism? And then here in Wikipedia, it says archons are in Gnosticism and religions closely related to it. The builders of the physical universe among the archontics, Ophites, Scythians, and the whatever. I think it's supposed to be the seven. What uh, it's it goes on. It says archons are the, and then it says each of the nine chief magistrates in ancient Athens. So it's it, you know like a lot of the Star Trek titles. It's a reference to something yeah. obscure or Shakespeare. You know they always did that. A lot of Shakespearean <laughs> titles. I knew it meant something. It wasn't because I heard it outside of Star Trek from my wife, and I said, that's a Star Trek episode. She said, what? And I so I knew it had some other meaning. Anyway, I'll shut up. Fireball Comics last comment. I hated Ditko growing up. So a did I. People, a lot of people do. Yeah, my, my dad older brothers. Stand. Yeah. My older brothers grew up in the 60s. I grew up in the 70s, and they hated Marvel. And they only read DC War Comics and Superman. They they would not touch my my old my second oldest brother. He loved Dial H for Hero, but they did not like Marvel. And I realized it just may have been that they couldn't get past and understand Kirby, because Kirby is it's like you gotta. At first, it's very jarring. People with square fingers sticking them in your face, you know, like that, and. And they, I, they just couldn't get past it. To me, I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, having great like characters best. helped too. I've <laughs> never loved, I've never learned to like coffee, but I guess it's like that. You got to learn to like it and then you can't, you just can't get enough of it. Well, were, were your brothers very conservative? Uh, well, probably, yeah, probably. Um, because I mean, if you think of you know, or DC, two things they, they were definitely aimed younger, but it was also it was very buttoned up, very conservative. Marvel was kind of like that, the it was like Brando in the leather jacket and a yes. motorcycle, yes. Yeah, or if you want, or or they could also be the hippies that, yeah, you know, I said mm -hmm. they were they kind of they were they were different. Yeah, well, my my brothers weren't old enough to be hippies. You know, my oldest brother graduated high school in 72. Well, maybe. And the other one graduated in like 74. But um, yeah, I, I think it was more, it might have just been, you know, if you just look at a Marvel, if you were there in 1965, a Marvel comic looked, it, it was almost like a Charlton kind of look. It felt cheaper. The a DC comic was probably slicker and looked nicer to the touch slicker than the marvel comics a little rougher uh, maybe i don't know what i don't know what they were thinking but it, it would have been great if i had inherited all these comics but they all disappeared before i could inherit dc or marvel whatever they bought i never got any of it so that that is true because if you're reading marvel comics in those days if the book wasn't inked by george bell yeah you, you were <laughs> He's just saying that to get my goat. So. Well, <laughs> well, the printing was the, the covers are printed a little bit bigger, like pulps. You know, it just, I don't know what they were thinking. I really can't uh, tell you because when they were, I was born in 65, which was the height of Marvel. And so I don't know what they were thinking at the time I was born, but, you know. But I do know that my 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 brother Mike told me he got he said I wouldn't I said I wouldn't buy any more DCs when I saw you know the Superman and Batman were like injected with LSD and they were hallucinating and I do remember some of that hallucinogenic stuff and you know and yeah. Speedy was on heroin and that's probably when he so yeah you're right there probably was a little conservative uh, <laughs> they then they got sick of DC when DC tried to get hip so. Yeah, there was that. <coughs> All right. Well, I'm going to show some Bronze Age. So we'll start with this. Uh, where is Superman? <coughs> there is just something. I love the Silver Age, but there's just something about these wild 
Bronze Age Superman or action. Yeah. And uh, when you talk about Goofy, Hawkman turns into a gorilla. Oh, boy. That was one of my first 10 comic books I ever bought new. Yeah, so that's what Jeanette Kahn killed is these cool reprints, huh? Yeah, she uh, she did she did start letting them trickle back in about two years yeah. later that she figured it out that it wasn't. And I think we all agree her outfit here was terrible. I mean, maybe Jambo has a soft spot in his heart for this. But... Uh, I can, it, it, it's yeah, it's not one of my favorites, but it's still you know. I think it looked better on Star Trek than on Supergirl. <laughs> Who did that cover, Mike Sikowski? Probably. Like yeah, that face, man. It looks like Sikowski. I don't know. Is it signed? Oh, yeah, she's scared of the mouse. I get it. Not a lot of DCs were in those days. And uh, it, it's such a bad costume. You know, she can't even keep track of it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then she went uh, a little crazy with the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> And the merman. Well, he's digging it. Yeah, they really were trying with the different. Uh, the... Well, he's he's got the Joker's pants. <laughs> well, I think they let they let little girls submit costume yes. ideas. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. This is probably more more my style. Definitely more Jambos for a costume. Yeah, but even the logo, you see the little tall red boots. But... Yeah. And then the logo is the red shorts. Going back just a smidge in between silver and bronze, early bronze, is the old traditional outfit. That in, in modern comics of today, do they do they still have a fortress of solitude or is that a something of the past no they brought it back but they they let well since since it's basically whatever any writer wants to do i think right now it's mm -hmm. under the ocean or something oh please i always loved that giant key i <laughs> thought that was yeah i just i just resent crisis on infinite earths i like the old i like the old stuff yeah but why did anybody need the key when you could just fly through the giant keyhole? Yeah, but it just looks cool. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, but <laughs> you are right. Here's uh, for record player fans. That's some Charlton Phantom. Another Phantom. And I'm almost done. We'll be going to Michael Dodd. Now here is uh, Boris Karloff number 11. Yeah. Tarzan. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, that's hilarious. Look at the hippies in the background. And then there's Law back. Is that Law of Opar? That's that's a that's one of the greatest. Yes, that's one of the Opar. greatest covers I've ever. I've never seen that cover. I got to get that issue. That was 200. That'll be easy to remember. 200. OK. Yeah. And who's the artist? Do you guys, you guys all seem to always know the artist. Uh, it it's usually George Wilson. George Wilson. And, and isn't another... that the name of Dennis the Menace's neighbor? Right. It's right. like okay, so that's easy to remember. I think we've had this discussion about oh, fourteen yeah. times, and I for you know, like an old man. I'm just... For example, I've got it labeled. This is George Wilson. I'm going to end on this one. Boris number twenty six. You know, they never told you what Mr. Wilson's job was. Maybe he was always painting these things while Dennis the Menace was annoying him. Exactly. And that's cool. He must have really been annoying him that day. 
<laughs> That's fantastic. I've never seen that one either. <laughs> yeah, this monster almost reminds me of the um, the monster in the uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. That little claymation at the end. Um, Can you imagine if the artwork if, if 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 the artwork inside those was like the covers? Like if they had if Steve Rude somehow was a, oh, yeah. an artist then. And the interiors looked as good as the covers. Can you imagine how historic Gold Key would be? Uh, just mm -hmm. um, but it's always was like this is not like the cover. Uh, well, well, you would have needed better paper probably to handle that type okay. of good good printing. Um, okay, I, I yeah, I'll buy that. All right, let me get caught up here, Michael. Uh, okay. <coughs> Hey, there's Steve. How oh, you doing? Got, Mr. Gotham Disney? City Comics, I'll call you tomorrow about uh, paying for all those books. And, uh, and some of those Western books I want to okay. get to, but I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Taylor and Jesse. All right, Michael, let's take it away. Okay. Oh. Just some uh, random comics that I've picked up in the last few weeks. This is actually the first appearance of Abel. Very nice. Uh, DC special number four. It's it's uh, it's a low grade copy, but uh, it's all there, you know. And uh, it's got a great Adams cover, and uh, it looks pretty good. What's what's low grade about it? I <laughs> well, it looks better in mylar. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, this it was actually now you're I don't know if you're gonna believe this or not. I couldn't believe it. It was a dollar and ninety five cents on a buy it now on eBay. Wow. Whoa, uh, that's great shape, well, dude. Get buy it now quick enough. Yeah. Now, I think I've shown this before, but it was in the box. So here we go. This is the first uh, issue of the war that time forgot. This is Star Spangled Whoa. War Stories number 90. Very nice cover. And this is very low grade. As you can see, there's a piece yeah. in it. Well, no, there's a piece well, in that's, it. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, it, it's in fair, uh, you know. And uh, the cover is all but detached. And, uh, but you know, I mean, even low grade copies of this book, people want like 200 bucks for them, man. And I got this thing for six bucks. So, and Michael, that's probably like the, if you're going to have a missing chunk of the cover, that's probably the best place right above that, that uh, comics codes. That's, you know, but yeah. there's something about it being in that condition. It, that means that it's not that it's in bad condition. I, I call it well loved. And a yeah. comic like that, I mean, it has everything a purple cover, a dinosaur, army, mm -hmm. war. It's everything a kid could have. Uh, what was yes. that, about 1959 or so? Or what you, you ain't afraid to sit down and read it, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here's uh, I bought a lot of these mini ghosts of Dr. Graves because I needed several issues to complete my run. And these are uh, the ones I needed of that lot. This is number 13. And is that run complete? No, sir, it is not. I still need to work on a lot of Charlton. Sure, sure. And here is another one. Uh, this is number 27. Trying to find a sweet spot here between the glare. And uh, there's number 28. Wow, trippy cover. Yeah, I, I really love all the bronze horror, but I need to work on uh, a lot of Charlton and especially a lot of Gold Key. Here is number 29. And number 30. Wow, what oh. is that? <laughs> you know, they reprinted that same cover and I've got it, but instead of purple, it's all orange. Yeah, they changed colors. Yeah, them. I think it's called Scary Tales. Yeah, here's number 31. And this was a haven for some cool Ditko back in the day. Here's number 32. Wow. And... 33 and 34 yeah I still need to play with the lighting on the I don't do enough streams to really uh, you know 
get used to doing it on the stream, but I've, I've got it figured out for the videos at least. Yeah. 36. That's, that's almost a DC cover. Very nice. Yeah. And 38. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is Charlton Heavy, these these books. Here's number 41. And some of them are double bagged and some of them are not. Because these have to go in my main with my main uh, bunch. Here's uh, 43. <coughs> 45. Weird. Yeah, that's uh, that must be Sutton. It looks like Tom Sutton. It's got a freaky signature there, but I think it says TF, so okay. And uh, this is uh, 46. It's a weird one, and 47. This. Looks like Joe Staten. Hmm. A collector. Wow. We can't relate to him. <laughs> Not at all. Here's number 50. Ooh. That's yeah. weird. I like those weird demonic covers like that. And uh, number uh, 55. By the way, uh, Jackson says your videos are well done. Oh, thank you, Jackson. 56. Yeah, that's Zach. Yeah, somebody's always interrupting a nice moment. <laughs> see, see, Mike, we've got we've got the grilling down. His are well done. Mine are rare. <laughs> 59. And 62. Oh, I have that one. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, I think that one was redone a couple of times. I should redo that cover, put Winnie the Pooh in there. <laughs> yeah. 67. <laughs> and here then, uh, we're into the gold key. Uh, this is uh, one of the March of Comics Turox that I needed. Uh -huh. Oh, and that's like the that. cons. Uh, this is number 378 from 1973. This is Washington, Maryland, and Virginia. They were a shoe store, I guess. And I have, I've got two copies of that because uh, the, the puzzles on the inside are done uh, a little bit differently by the kids that had those. And uh, that's pretty cool for me. But I just kept, I'm going to keep both copies of those. This is number 399 from 1974. More Hans goodness there. Yeah, a lot of those were shoe stores because if, if other kids were like me, I hated going in a shoe store. It was very uncomfortable, and so they'd give you free comics. Yeah, they brought now them. Now kids, the that's the thing they love the most is shoes and cell phones. I didn't he, like them. Here's the uh, last one, number 408 from 1975. There were three of these, and that actually finishes my Turok run of everything that I know of. Wow. Uh, that's uh, Buster Brown, of course. And uh, oh. yeah, that's just the sales thing. And I've got a couple more here. Here's uh, the uh, Tales from the Tomb, Bell Giant. Nice. Yeah, I've always wanted that. He's got Pixel's fingers, Rarick. Show that again for a little Eric to see. Okay. Uh, this is. Uh, Man, who the heck did that? I forgot. It slipped my mind. It's uh, LB Cole. Oh, looks like uh, looks like Joe Biden in an elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cole did that. And I uh, got a couple of uh, Dale Tarzans here with the uh, painted covers. Very nice. Yeah, that is good. And of course, we got a big monkey. Yeah. 
that Tarzan character always impressed me because he could beat the crap out of those gorillas. And do you know how much stronger a gorilla is than a human? Yeah, I used to just totally love that cartoon. And oh, yeah. From the uh, 70s. Yeah. Too, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a couple of years younger than you guys. And so that cartoon was that just spoke to me. Yeah, I liked it at the time, too. Um, Here's the Dell Giant for the reprint for Dracula and the Mummy and other stories. This this is chock full, man. These Dell Giants, they really gave you your quarter's worth, you know? Oh, I've never seen that one. I, I've never seen it either. Yeah. It's shocking. I think wow. I think when did that, that thing exist? I, I've seen a, a Dracula and a Mummy, but I've never seen them together. Yeah, well, this is the reprint. It reprints those plus a couple of other stories, and I believe... This one is from uh, 64, maybe, maybe 63. Oh, I, I've never seen that, ever. Oh. And here is the first voyage to the bottom of the sea in uh, four color, wow. number 1230. Is that based on the movie before the, it's based on the movie, right? Before the TV yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why and then later the funny. series uh, came and that uh, was yeah. the TV show. And uh, now here's something uncharacteristic for me. New comics from Alterna, Wolf oh, and Patsy. That's what Horror Mike was uh, raving about. Right? Yeah, yeah, these yeah. are good, man. Oh, they are? Good. I, mean, they they look like they and, I just uh, wish they were in stores. He does a really good job on this series. His name is Brian Ball. B a u g h and uh, Jackson. No, I didn't know a DVD existed. I should go get that. That's great. Oh, of the Tarzan. Yeah, I didn't know that. You know that I think I might actually have it. I don't remember. I don't know what I own, but that Tarzan may be the best, most accurate Tarzan in film. Uh, you know, in history. Uh, kind of like the movie. Batman the animated series is really the best Batman, in my opinion. These are some sweet books, Michael. Yeah. Thanks. How many of these are from your childhood? Any of them? No, no. Uh, the, the ones I had as a really young child, like in the mid 60s, yeah. Uh, those were read to death, man. I think those were all coverless, you know. Yeah, I Meyer. Just did stuff off of eBay and wherever I could find it. Meyer had a good idea for us to recreate what we can. Um, of like our collection, maybe about a year into, of course, it would take a lot of work, about a year into collecting the comics, the first comics we had, you know, like the first hundred or something, and then show those like our, our beginning collection. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, I guess I could do that. It would just take a lot of work and then I have to refile everything. But I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, that was a good idea. Is that it for this round, Michael? Yeah, that's it for this round. All right. Well, uh, Gratu, do you have anything to show? Oh, yeah, I can dig up something. Let's see here. And uh, we're still uh, we're still awaiting Spinner Rack Dave, and I've got an email from him. His train is now having trouble on his way back to his home. So everything is against us tonight, but he <laughs> is he is feverishly trying to get here to us. So we hopefully uh, okay. will we'll still be going. So but we going. persevere. Yes. I'm trying to remember who does this. It, it's it's an artist, and I think he's I, I think it's the guy that's done some signs for me in the house. But he used to do this fanzine called Snack Bar Confidential, and it's just a collage of amazing art. You know, it's just everything we love all you know together. And um, so you know, they're just be it, it's just like he's gone through. Uh, microfilm, you know, at the library, finding these old ads, you know, an ad for Planet of the Apes, you know, I Dream of Genie TV Guide ad, Lost in Space Helmet. Do you have that, Michael? Lost hey. in Space Helmet and Gun. Uh, no, don't have that one, no. And it's just, uh, I got to make sure some of the stuff's not appropriate. It's like the Star Trek ad, maybe from the, from like the one of the first episodes. I mean, he's just got, uh, it's just a, He's just vomited forth all of this wonderful stuff. You know, he's someone that um, I just wish I could remember. He's in, wherever he's at, he's P.O. Box 1359 Huntington, New York. So he's in Huntington, New York. But I don't think that address is still good because this was at least 10 years ago that he sent me these. 
But um, yeah, just weird, you know, collages of stuff. Goodness. Um, I and I I would use it. I would he he does the you know he picks all this art and sometimes I would photocopy from this and use his stuff in my magazines or in the school newspaper when I was doing that. Um, just oh wow, look at this! Imagine that ad in the newspaper. I used to cut out horror movie ads, you know, like that from the newspaper when I was a kid. That was what yeah. I, when I got the newspaper, I wanted to look at the comic strips. I wanted to look at the movie ads because that, they, that ad for the beast of blood is so great, man. I love that. Where yeah, I, I actually, I have the poster to that. I don't know if you watch. Wow. I put, up, I put out so many episodes lately. I don't think anyone could watch them all, but I, I show the beast of blood poster somewhat recently. Yeah, I need I've been to changing that. out the background back here too. Um, yeah, by the way, I love your Marvel posters right behind your head. Look, yeah. look very, yeah. very well, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, my wife was pointing out that it doesn't really look good. And it, plus, it's a comic book room, and I had nothing but movie posters. So I tried to, as I was going through my posters, I was moving them from another room into this closet back behind me. And so I, right around Thanksgiving, I did a, a bunch of episodes where I was showing every poster, and that may not interest everybody. Here's some other copies of the same magazine, and it's just uh, it just you know it's an ad for Sergeant Pepper, you know, it's just uh, I, and then he, he'll combine things in this magical way. Bun and burger with a picture of uh, Zira there, like she's part of the ad, which would have been <laughs> wonderful. Um, you know, imagine they use zero <laughs> to promote hamburgers yeah. in a perfect world. You know, maybe that's what heaven's going to be like hamburgers and Planet of the Apes all mixed together. You know, I, I, I can only imagine God probably has a sense of humor. I mean, because look at us, so maybe heaven will have all kinds of whimsical things like that. Um, yeah, Toys R Us wants you to go ape. I don't even remember Toys R Us existing. In the, in the early 70s. I, not where I lived. In San Antonio, the cool toy store was called Kitty City, which I think was bought up by Lionel. But Toys R Us, I never saw Toys R Us until the very late 70s. And anyway, I got a ton of these. And you know, another thing I ought to bring on one night or on my show maybe, is I've got a stack of catalogs like you were showing, Michael. You've got the reprints of them. I've got some actual real catalogs kind of hard to show and cumbersome but is that book still in print that you have of the reprints of the wish books and stuff i don't think uh, so i believe you got to get it on the secondary market now okay is it expensive i don't know i haven't shopped for one for a while I well, yeah, you don't need to because you've got one um, i had to give around 50 bucks for that one i think but that was uh, a few years ago okay yeah let's see if there's anything amazing i've got I mean, I got stuff everywhere because I'm in a process of uh, this is what I got when I went to the theater to see the thing. What was that about 1982? I got I got stuff everywhere, you know, like a little box of Ultraman candy. Wow, Look at that guy. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, you know, it's just like I don't know what's interesting. Uh, well, that was interesting. I never oh, saw that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Meyer showed this the other week, right? Didn't he like last week or week before? This is a Toshin book. Toshin's done giant EC books in some a Marvel and a DC that are like gigantic, like not gigantic. And so it's got reproductions of the original art in here. And um, speaking of gigantic comics, do any of them? Well, I don't need to be showing this inappropriate stuff on a graphic man's show. Uh, there's a sacrifice. That's, I guess that's the new Submariner sacrificing someone. Um, you know, just like stuff like that, um, which really, in a way, isn't that different from the Tarzan covers we were just looking at. Um, here's a here's a book from the early 70s about pulps that they used to advertise in the Warren magazines. This is because uh, the 70s, they had all the nostalgia boom. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, my mind is jumbled. I don't know. Not, 
You're doing fine. Uh, what else is there? We like chaos. Yeah, well, I um This is uh, one of the earliest artifacts from Sesame Street. Because I was uh, four when Sesame Street started in 1969, so it, you know, it's just a little book. It's but in here, I think when you see I've got a couple of these. You remember this little cartoon they ran? Um, this is when, this is so old that Oscar the Grouch was still orange. And, um, of course, Sesame Street was ruined when they brought in uh, Elmo. There we go. So, um, this is long before Elmo. And I wonder, if I was a little kid, would I accept Elmo? I don't think I would. You ever think about this? Would you get into Pokemon if you were a kid today? Uh, I, so you ever think about that? Would you um, get into the... I don't think I would. I never thought about it, but now I'm listening to Elmo's voice in my head, and I don't think I would have sat down and watched him. I mean, Elmo... I mean, he, he, Look up the actor that played Elmo originally. I think he got yeah. in big trouble. Yeah, kind of like someone that Biden yeah. would appoint to some significant right. office. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that guy? That bald guy that he put in charge of the nuclear... Yeah, uh, he stole waste. that suitcase. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he said, I thought it was mine, yeah. but then I was shocked there was clothes in it that so I, I didn't own. <laughs> so I put it in the drawer in the hotel. And he says, wait a minute. No, I, now I, now I think back clearly. Well, he went without any luggage. So he went to the luggage. He was looking, and there was it was a $3,000, $2,500 designer piece of luggage he took it they have him on camera taking the name tag off yeah, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then he kept using it on trips from washington he was using his yeah. new piece of luggage this uh, delightful fellow um anyway yes very commendable for all that recycling he did yeah, yeah but but he's <laughs> he's got to be the best possible candidate um you know for that job yes um Someone's saying Gratu's video showing the Beast of Blood poster is nuts. Some of those movie posters are really incredible. Thank you, Lead Paint. Yes. Uh, and okay. uh, by the way, speaking of Meyer, uh, guys, check out Meyer Greenblatt's latest video about Tarzan books. He shows a whole bunch of great paperbacks that he got uh, when he was much younger and fabulous shape they're in. And it's just a very, very good video. I highly recommend it. So yeah. that's this guy, in case you're new to the show. Go see Meyer Greenblatt. And he has a great one where he's talking how angry he is with his siblings because they sold their Star Wars early bird figures. Oh, yes, yes. I night. saw that one, too. <laughs> that, that was hilarious. I, 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 like, I like passion in YouTube videos. That was great. Yeah. Um, and Dave Almost has single-handedly right. put the train back on the track for the uh, railways, and he's managed oh, to get home. My guy's going to mess. Is yeah. There, All of the trains servicing one, one part of downtown, uh, they weren't running them. I don't know what happened. So I had to walk all the way down to the other end where the baseball field is, and uh, uh, so I just got, just got in. <laughs> you, have you decorated for Christmas yet? I Yes and no, Gratu. It was it was to be our our big Christmas year, but my wife is watching her mom uh, halftime, and and they're just things that okay. happen that we didn't get it done. But I do have okay. some Christmas up, and I've got a tree. And I was talking to Micah. This um, I'm going to try to put a video together because I've got a tree up in my comic book room, and I probably have about a half a dozen, well, 50, a dozen, maybe fifteen uh, ornaments that are comic book. Related. I was thinking, if it looks like you're on a stationary camera, I was thinking if you were to dial in on a cell phone, could you give us a tour? But you're not ready yet. Of your well, Christmas what I'm going to do is take a video, kind of like uh, what Paulo does in a way, yeah. but I'm going to do it by way of video of the tree, and I'll take some shots, a video of the ornaments and all, and then I'll send it. I'm going to try to upload it and send it to Graphic Man. During once, the you're all once you get everything decorated in your house, are you going to do a video for YouTube? Or I, you I, we're going to do a, a couple smaller videos. Like I said, I mean, we maybe have maybe 5% of what we ordinarily put out. So 
Oh, wow. so, but we will on my other channel be doing a, a couple of few Christmas uh, videos. So, so anyway, when he gets the video, I told him try to send it to me. We'll practice ahead of time before we yeah. go live or something. So, can you decorate a spinner rack like a Christmas tree? <laughs> you know, that's an idea. So, I haven't been on the last few weeks because we hosted Thanksgiving and I was changing out the spinner racks. They all are changed out for uh, Christmas, so they have Christmas books on them now. But that's an idea. I haven't put any uh, garland ever... lights. I'll put a star on top. Yeah, it's yeah, that'd be awesome. cool. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, oh, but I did really quickly good. grab a uh, some Christmas stuff I can show you. One, one. All bag. right. Yeah, let's go right to you. All right. So first of go. all, some of these uh, treasuries. Nice. Great shape too. Yeah, my mom bought the very first one for me, which turns out to be very valuable. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, that's a good one. You know what? I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna take this out real quick. Hold on, guys, because um, I gotta tell you something interesting about this particular one. All right. So there's the uh, the front. And of course, this is John Ramita Sr. <laughs> and I have a friend who has the original art to the cover and the back cover. Wow. And I'll have to let, I'll have, to, I have photos of it. I'll have to ask him if uh, I can show it, but uh, it is just gorgeous. I'd love to purchase it. The from way him, that but... Santa has his, the way Santa has his arm extended, it's like, go oh, thee yeah. forth like he's yeah. Odin. Which is yeah. what Santa Claus and Odin is. Santa Claus is based on Odin, yeah. I guess. Look at that. look at his uh, but, his grin there. It's kind of like he's got a little bit of a shit eating grin, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's probably sending them to beat up all the bad kids. <laughs> so it's like, anyway. I don't have coal this year. Just go punch him out a little bit. And of course, this is by everybody's uh, good friend Gil Kane, I believe. Oh, well, yeah. look at Not that. that. Well, I've never seen treasure. that one. I've got the wow. other two you just showed, but I've never seen that in my life. And let me uh, pull this one out because it's got a cool backside, too. Yeah, is that um, sweet or what, man? All right, here we go. All right, so there's the front again. Yeah. And it's actually a, a kind of a wraparound uh, cover. Oh, wow. Nice. There's the back. Man, if you could buy one and destroy it and then frame it, you know, if it would be worth it to do that, that'd be cool. All right. So, um, oh, and and this is actually not really comic book related, but uh, I collect vintage lights. And back in the 40s through the 60s, Noma was the primary Christmas uh, light manufacturer in this country. And here's an advertisement. Uh, with some of their uh, bubble lights and lights. So they bubble. Can you replace the bulbs in them? You you can. Um, I, I've got uh, the C6 uh, bulbs to replace. Yeah, I, I I know a guy who used to work at Bernoma, and he's got a whole bunch of the old C6 bulbs. So, yeah, you can crack them open. But didn't you say they run kind of hot, so you run them on half power or something? I... I uh, not half pot. Well, when they're in the box, like in that display I have upstairs when I do it, I do run those pretty low. But even on my major Christmas tree, which I'll, I'll do some video of, um, I tend to run them at about 85%, 90% the bubble lights. They do require heat, of course, to get them to bubble. But um, I was told that back in the day, uh, most houses weren't getting a full 120 volts. They were getting maybe like 115, 110. Yeah. And so you kind of want to run the vintage lights a little bit. Uh, slower. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Now, do you have any of the original 50s comics that these reprint? I've always wanted to get those. I don't think, well, I, I do. I Yeah, I, I do have at least one I know of. And you'll probably be seeing it here later on. Yeah. I okay. love the art in those. What was the artist in those? Was it Sheldon? Sheldon Mayer. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And he's one of my favorites too. I keep forgetting. 
And then, you know, my Christmas stuff, I have got Archie was probably the best uh, publisher for the holidays. I mean, they just did a ton of Christmas stuff, as you guys know. Yeah. So I've got a fair amount of uh, Archie Christmas stuff. Archie, yeah. and then I think Dill would come in second. Yeah. 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 yeah the Archie Dill. Christmas covers are beautiful, especially a little bit earlier than early, very early 70s. They were just gorgeous. And I love the logo and everything. It was really special seeing those on the stand. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I love these love-ins. Almost as good as Jughead's Eat Out. <laughs> you know that one? Eat Out? He has yeah. a comic called Eat Out, and yeah, it's you know out. notorious for being kind of you know double meaning, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's about him eating out at restaurants, but you know, like people think. You know, Sheldon Meyer was responsible for Superman because they had thrown Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster's idea in the trash can, and he took it out of the trash can and said, hey, this looks like it's okay. So if it wasn't for him, it, Superman may not exist, mm -hmm. at least not from D.C. Uh, I've been brained already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoot. Uh, there we go. It's kind of a Charlie Brown uh, looking yeah. in the background there. Yeah, it's very nice. Graphic cool. man, you made a Bitcoin one of Richie Rich. I'm hearing that all these Bitcoin entrepreneurs are being assassinated one by one. I'm hearing like the third one just got killed. I don't think the government the government likes Bitcoin. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna have an official Christmas episode, or do we want to do it through the whole month, or what? Oh, we can do just whatever. Um, what I am putting, Christmas? I am putting a few Christmas books together because I've been invited on Night Tiger's show here in a, about a week and a half. Oh, he didn't invite me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's he, all right. Uh, he he told me. Uh, uh, in fact, I love Disney in the uh, in the crowd here. Uh, he's going to be on there as well. So That's I have to cool. find something to compare to these guys. <laughs> well, he's the one that inspired me to put all my Christmas books in a separate box because I thought that's a good idea. Then I just have them ready for at Christmas time. Well, I'm going to show Christmas uh, through the uh, December because that's all that, I've got out right now. That's cool. Yeah. If I don't run, if I don't run out, that is. To make right, Christmas so and Halloween or all year. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. There's. Uh, Richie Rich. Oh, 9.8 for a Harvey comic. I always like this one. Uh, yeah, that's cute. Yeah, the older they get, the bigger the heads are and the bigger the eyes are and thus the cuteness, yeah. Yeah, hopefully the captain will be watching because he likes the Harveys. Oh, oh he'll watch. And, um, you know, the other thing I guess I got right here I can show real quick is um, early on I was collecting, when I was collecting Christmas stuff, I started collecting some uh, Christmas original art. And God, you could get it cheap. And so this is, like I have some full stories. And this is uh, one of them from uh, one of the Jughead books, I believe. And I'll show that real quick. But it's kind of cool because you can just sit there and read the story. Yeah. It's writing yeah. in the mark. Later tonight, Dave will break out the crayons and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. There's two more pages to this story. And then here's the uh, final page to the story. That's nice. All right. Well, that's all I got, guys. Oh, they looked good. Looked real good. And uh, Grout 2, are you joining us again? So, sorry, I think my internet's kind of dodgy tonight. My Wi-Fi. Do you want me to cancel that one? The old one? Oh, shoot. Uh, there it is. I, 
Okay, I was on there twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. I didn't know that was possible from one. Yeah, that doppelganger. <clears throat> I think it was keeping a ghost of you there for a second. But oh, okay. okay. That's cool. But, but it said Grotto Orloff. It did? No. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't stare at it. Yes, yes, yes. Here's Evil Black Cat. I don't know these people. <laughs> I mean, uh, these are new people. That's cool. They're 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 um, people from Anglantine land. Oh, pseudonyms. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Evil Black Cat kills me off every week, so now he's just widening yes. his parameters. Yeah. Somebody uh, on in Anglantine's crowd, I thought they were being rude to me, and I was kind of like snippy back, and I don't think they were. So no, they're, 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 no, everybody loves when you show up. So everybody says hi no, to I, you. One time I said hello, and then someone at, right after it put hello, question mark. And I thought, well, I said, well, I won't say hello next time. And I, I don't know that they meant it that way, but I was going to move oh. in, I guess. I think it was someone like, I love anime or something is his name or something. Hmm. Or I love, I don't know, someone like that. And so I, I apologize. I just got. It's like, well, what the heck is this guy saying to me? He's like, no, no, hello? Not... Question mark? Well, I'm just saying hi. No, everybody, like I said, everybody likes when you show up there. And so I said, yeah, we still want you to read with us and all that crap. So. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, Trusty does do a great Stan Lee impersonation. <laughs> and Eric Breen does a very, very good uh, Cary Grant. <laughs> That's how I do Sue Storm. Yes. yes. <laughs> Pining away for Submariner. So, speaking of Eric, Eric, do you have anything, dare I yes, say? Yes, I do, and that's well, it's, it might be scary. All right. The graphic is Submariner, Nairner, Nairner, Nairner. Come on, you're right. Uh, well, you're, I knew you're you, on the channel. I knew you'd correct me. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm here. All right, well, I'll start with you. I'm going to try getting the season one day early, so I will show a random Dell Christmas giant. Hey, there nice. We go. Very nice. Yeah. Now, you can tell that this, this, I don't think I can stuff one of these in one of those comic pro line bags, which sucks because I mean, you can just see how murky they are in comparison. That's not too bad, though. Eh, first world problems, I know. Continuing with the sensitive side of this presentation, excellent. Except these days, Hollywood romances would be well, never mind. You mean between um, also that one and that yeah. one there? Yeah. <laughs> a... Or animals and vegetables. You never and, know. So. And <laughs> when when Hollywood fell out of vogue, they changed it to For Lovers Only. Oh, that's a good cover. And I believe the he next looks... month, Supergirl was wearing that as a costume. Yes. <laughs> he looks a little sensitive. I wonder... Yeah. See, here's a house of mystery. Oh, very cool. Bernie Wrightson. And this is, like I said, <laughs> th this is how nice these comic pro lines are. This book is, this is a charitable 1.0. Hmm. It looks, looks fine in the bag. Um, uh, Howard Zidduck. Um, this is an issue of the Hulk that we were going to do a retrospective on, but we are no longer doing retrospective, so there will not be a retrospective. Oh, dear. In retrospect, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, from, from the heart, fellas. It's that's neat. Now, it's too bad about the retrospect. I was hoping you'd get to a book that I've actually read. I would have joined you guys. Well, but they, I mean, they're all old books. Why haven't you read them? Yeah, but you guys have just hit the ones I just haven't. I don't have. No, it's all been building to this. Oh dear. There's, there's art, and then there's art, and then there is art. Hmm. Yep. So what do you guys think of that? 
Well, choose bring it in a little next, closer. Let's choose see. your next words carefully. <laughs> that sounds well, it's like sense. It's easy to it's see up their nostrils when they don't have noses. <laughs> We'd hate yeah. to set off any alarms. Ooh, we're good so far. Yeah, we really hate that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's. I wish that was the last Black Panther movie. That's for sure. Justice League, and if I hold it like that, oh, it, it goes up a grade. It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's I've never a, seen that cover either. Another Justice League. Floating heads, purple. That's a found a bunch of these for a buck a piece. Man. There's the ten year anniversary of Marvel Kid Colt issue. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, many there's a many ghosts of Dr. Graves. Well, very good. <clears throat> Numero tres. Oh, this is oh, this is <laughs> false. Marvel Tales. Another Marvel Tales. <clears throat> It almost looks like it always looked like that guy's head is upside down. <laughs> Three of them without the great one on any. <laughs> oh, just, oh, just, what a run of bad luck. It's a couple of two and ones from the Project Pegasus storyline. Yeah. Perez. Yeah, it's well, it, um, burn and then Perez. And considering how many issues of, I'm not going to criticize any of the artists, but let's say there, there, there were no Burns or Perez's when Burn and Perez weren't on there. So this was a nice little run. Yeah. All right, here's uh, an Atlas romance. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh, Phantom Stranger. Yep. Yeah, you can't tell that I just just read and alphabetize them one box at a time, can you? Nope. Nope. Hey. Well, what do you know? Not only. <laughs> hey, look who <laughs> the artist is. Oh dear. <laughs> It's not doing it. <laughs> Can you see up the horse's nose? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> what is the damn thing broken? <laughs> <laughs> They're not going crazy for it. <laughs> I'm just very quiet about I, my I, 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 I blame the lack of panel representation. Yes, you've got a very quiet, <laughs> respectful crowd. <laughs> it almost looked like Sal Buscema to me. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. Yeah. There's uh, Secret Hearts number 59. I'm sorry, Marania. I tried. Oh, wow. Wait, That's who is that artist? I don't know who the artist on this one, but do we That's have a G. Colon romance alarm? Because that's him on the cover <laughs> of this. Well, oh. what? Th that last one, what's the number on that one? Uh, 59. And what was the title? Secret Hearts. Secret Hearts. That was, I really like that cover. Is, uh, Sergeant Fury. I've never seen that cover either. What the heck? It's like you guys are pulling out comics from another dimension. <laughs> That's a, Isn't that an unusual one? I, you never see that in the stores. Well, the Germans were trying their own version of uh, Fury's commandos, and so they had... A, a German guy for each of the howlers. Number uh, eighty-one. You've seen the the parody in National Lampoon, right? I, I shouldn't even talk about that. The parody of Sergeant Fury. No, I won't talk about it. I'll talk uh, about it on my channel. Now the last two. <laughs> Shadow. There we go. Yeah, that's great. 
Yeah, and I bought that when I was in fourth grade. Last but not least, a one hundred one hundred page square bound, and yeah, Rod's not here to appreciate it. Yep. And Lex Luthor ends up in Shazam's universe. Mr. Mind is far better than Black Adam. They should have had The Rock play Mr. Mind. <laughs> that would have been better. That'll do it. I mean... Oh, that Shadow Run is fabulous. Well, uh, Michael, you got anything else? Sure. Mark's figures. <laughs> got <cable. laughs> These are bigger. That's cool. Great. Batter up. Yeah. 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 I've never seen that either. How rare is that thing? Ah, uh, you can get them there. They're not really that rare. Uh, it's 1963. And they were just a series there. of cavemen that size? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the 63 date is in Roman numerals. Yeah, there are six poses of these. Here's one running with a club and a stone knife. Hey, you're not supposed to run with a knife. Yeah, that's right, man. That guy. His mother would not be happy. Not at all. Here's a guy with a rock. That's a big surprise. A caveman with a rock. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I was crazy for these when I was a kid, man. I <laughs> I beat mine all to heck playing with them, and I had to buy these off of eBay because they're not all beat up. Here's a guy with a big rock. Yeah, that's almost like one of the Aurora kits. I think of the one of, I forget what type of caveman that was he had a rock over his head maybe the crow magnon guy catfish yeah. hunter <laughs> here's another one though with a stone axe and uh a clenched fist or actually well, if, holding something there it looks like a little rock well if trump wins in 2024 this is what you're going to see in the streets yeah he's got a little <laughs> rock he's got the ball that he was going to throw to the dude with the bat well, you'll see that in the streets or whatever town they choose for a convention. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. Here's the guy with a spear. And wow. the sculpts on these are great, man. You know, it's Lewis yeah. Marks, so. Yeah, he almost looks like the Hulk in the face. Those are the cavemen. Now, here is something of some importance. The first uh, Universal Monsters Marks figures. Here's the Phantom. Oh, the first ones were blue, huh? Yeah, teal blue, uh, 1963. Michael, you ever tempted to paint those um, like like a real model kit style? Well, they, they don't take the paint well, but a company called Uncle Milton made a paint set in, in around 1990 that I've got on my video about these. And those do take the paint very well because that's what they're intended for. This is from '63. These well, are. what you can what you can do it's best to get the the Mexican re, re pops from like the '90s, so you don't feel guilty about painting them. You just put a primer on them, and then it'll take acrylic paint fine. Yeah. Here's the uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. And the sculpts are fantastic on these, man. Yeah. This is not Cheney. It's, uh, I think it's actually maybe uh, Anthony Quinn that hmm. they took that from. I don't think it's Charles Lawton, but it's possible, I guess. And here is the mummy. And it's the Karis mummy because, uh, you know, in the 90s onward, we just saw uh, the. Uh, the Boris Karloff mummy on everything, but uh, in the old days, back in the 60s and 70s, we had Karis mummies. Well, it was Earth. always the back then, it was always the damaged eye bleeding. Yeah. Yeah, it was either uh, Tom Tyler or Lon Chaney Jr. on everything. Good old days. And here, of course, is the Monta. Hmm. And they have the little nameplates, kind of like the Aurora kits, you know, that these were influenced greatly by uh, the Aurora model kits. And they look good right in, if you put them right in front of the Aurora kit, they look really good together. Yeah. And we have the Wolfman. 
Only that shirt is very reminiscent of the hammer curse of the werewolf <laughs> with Oliver Reed. Or Tom Jones, you know, it's kind of how he dressed in concert. And that's a pretty cool little uh, base there, too. It's got a snake along with the uh, oh, nice, yeah, the nameplate there. And we have saving the best for last, of course, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, cool. And this, of course, is from Revenge of the Creature. They took this look, you know, where he's chained. Take a look at the sculpt there. Yeah. Very nice. And, uh, you know, you just can't beat the sculpting on these things, man. Cool. So, yeah. he was, so that's when he was captured and they've chained his feet. Yeah. That's and he brushed cool. it loose at Marineland or whatever. Now, here's something you don't see every day. This is actually a Mexican knockoff <laughs> Mark style creature. I've never seen that. This is one weird mamma jamma. Look at the head on that thing. It reminds me of one of the deep ones in H.P. Lovecraft's Shadow Over Innsmouth. Yeah, an Ultraman kind of villain. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. And uh, <laughs> that is a crazy thing. And I believe they uh, got that sculpt, the body sculpt from uh, the Pinplex Creature uh, Aquarium ornament. Now, this is the re release by Vinny's, but uh, this is, uh, you know, the same uh, ornament that Pinplex did back in the 70s. Yeah. And I believe that's where they got the sculpt for that body. I had the original, and it was in my dad's aquarium, and I guess he just threw it away. But, you know, it was probably covered in fish poop. But and that's it for my marks, figures. Uh, I've actually got some more stuff, but uh, unless you just need it, you know. It's, it's, we can that's up to you. Well, we're doing good on time. If you want to show them. Um, sure, sure. All right. Yeah, yeah I got some uh, MPC King Kong stuff. I did a video on this stuff on my channel, but uh, I... I don't remember if I showed any of this on any of your shows or not, Micah, but uh, this is the window box playset oh, wow. by NPC <laughs> from 1967. That's of the uh, Rankin Bass cartoon. There's all the little characters from the cartoon there. And there's the Kong figure with the magnetic hand and Skull Island there. And, uh, you know, it's got the cool MPC graphics. You couldn't beat MPC for monster graphics. Yeah, Even that cartoon uh, type monster graphics. What is that worth in the box? Jeez, man, I have no freaking idea. I, I fell upon this in on eBay. And the only reason, see, the listing really sucked. But uh, I saw through it and saw what it really was in that big pile of crap and those lousy pictures because I. Uh, I grew up with MPC monster play sets and yeah. uh, I saw a gem, you know, a little piece of gold in a pile of crap there. And I ended up getting it for like 300 bucks and it had a whole bunch of extra stuff like some Palmer King Kongs. And it had some of those old rubber jigglers from, uh, you know, like the sixties. And uh, it also had a bunch of extra, uh, extra pieces from the King Kong jungle set. <laughs> I sold the duplicate stuff and got my money back on it. So this didn't cost me anything. Oh. I have yep. never seen another one of these. And so, I keep, I have saved searches for this for like 14 years. And I have never, uh, <clears throat> actually, I take that back. I haven't seen one that was intact like this. I've seen one other that didn't have any cello and the box was crushed. <clears throat> But I have yeah. never seen another one like this that was. Yeah, there. it's amazing. So I have no freaking idea what it's worth. The weird I've thing. Also got the King Kong Jungle set. Oh. Here's the box. It's uh, the place that uh, that uh, NPC did. It's actually uh, their one of their jungle play sets that they did special figures for from the cartoon. And I'll show you the figures real quick. I'm not going to go into all of it. I did a video on those too, so anybody that wants to see that stuff in detail can check that out on my channel. But here is uh, 
the King Kong figure <laughs> from the Rankin Bass cartoon, the King Kong show. The weird thing about that show, it, it was Rankin Bass, but they did they hired a Japanese firm to do the animation, right? Yeah, yeah. It, the, the, the name of the is, Japanese company was to Toei, I think. Toei, it, well, Toei is is like Toho's rival, and Toei did uh, the Common Rider shows, and they do that nowadays. They do the Power Rangers stuff, what they call them in the states. But the weird thing is, there was uh, the. King Kong Escapes, the Toho production, King Hong Kong Escapes, was based on that cartoon because the villain yeah. is Doctor Who. And yeah, you Doctor know that. Who. I don't know if everyone knows that. that. That's a great movie, man. I love that. It movie. is, yeah. But it's, uh, it's, here it's, is uh, the ca character figures. This is Captain Inglehorn. And these figures have a little piece of metal attached to the. These are rubber figures and they're painted and they have a little piece of metal attached so that Kong can pick them up with his magnetic hand. Michael, you know, Kong's head looked uh, a lot like the abominable snowman head <laughs> yeah. From, yeah. from Rudolph, to me at least, when you had it up, did you? Yeah. Here's Professor Bond from the show. And then you've got, of course, the sister, uh, Susan Bond. And... The star of the show with Kong, Bobby Bond. He rides around on Kong's shoulder, you know. And Kong has to save him a lot. <laughs> and other than that, it's pretty much, you know, one of the NPC jungle sets. I'm not going to drag all that stuff out. But like I said, if anybody wants to see all that in detail, I did a video on it. So click away. And I believe that does it for me. Very, very good stuff, Michael. Very good stuff. Does uh, anybody else have any uh, anything they want to show or talk about? Or I can show a few quick things that are here before they get put up. Here's a let's just throw on the monster theme. Yeah, give me a second. Oh, sorry. No problem. There you go. Um, Frame tray puzzle. I'm sure Michael has this in better condition. But, no, actually, uh, I don't. Oh, you don't? Oh my gosh! No, there's a lot of that stuff I don't have. No, that's cool. well, it's it's just a great painting. Yeah, it is. Man. So that's cool. um the kid that originally owned it wrote Puzzle Two. Original <laughs> owner. You can tell it's about like a five or six year old. Yeah. And uh, this is Puzzle 3. And he's always got a stamp on here for Boys Town. So maybe he was a juvenile delinquent. Isn't that what Boys Town is? Um, this is Puzzle 3. Hmm. Yeah, this is Dr. Fauci's lab. <laughs> okay. And puzzle 1. Yeah, those are classics. Yeah, and then um, this is a great one. Yeah, and uh, the only puzzle featuring Jet Screamer. Oh, cool! Futuristic Elvis, and. This is Rip Foster picture puzzle. It says down there at the bottom. There you go. But anyway, this is what the future was supposed to be like. Instead, it's drones lock in, you know, flying over Chinese yeah. cities, dropping weird chemicals and locking people into apartments. And then the building gets caught on fire and they can't escape. That's the real future. But um, this, I got this in fifth grade. It's Jim Stranko's History of Comics. Um, lots of people hate him now. Unfortunately, um, they shouldn't because he's right in his politics. I first heard from Eric Green that he had uh, let his, uh, I guess, his freak flag fly, that he's uh, on Trump's he, side. And he I is literally the insignia on the Red Skull's forehead now. 
It's right yeah. there on the back of his book. The signs right. were all there. Can you imagine if Red Skull really had that in the comics on his phone? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it, it, just in case you guys didn't remember, it's the size, maybe a little bit bigger, of a Treasury edition. And it's just a very authoritative mid or early 70s history of comics. And it's got, it's just incredible. You know, I was looking at this as a fifth grader. You know, Space 1999 was on TV, and I was reading about the time that I got this. And there's there are two volumes, volumes of that in there. Yeah. Huh? There are two of those, right? Yes. Yep. Here's the other one. They are great, man. I've got I, them I both when of them I lived too. in Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, they're they're great. I don't know what they go for now. I, I don't know if they're super expensive. Maybe not now that he's a yeah. horrible person. Yeah. But um, better, you know? You know, just stuff like it's just It's great, you know? And he has this authoritative knowledge. It's very obsessively uh, wonderful um you know stuff about the spirit which i was already reading from the warren reprints it started a little bit before then but anyway this is like and i could kind of bond with my father because this is the comics that well i mean he read some comics but he said he mainly read captain midnight but he said he remembered having a superman comic where it showed the rocket leaving his home planet and i'm thinking oh he probably had Action Comics number one or something. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure they showed that in other issues, but I'm thinking, shoot, he probably he was just the right age, you know. He he um because he was um you know he just missed World War II by maybe a year. He was in junior high and then high school during the war, so you know he was the age to be buying those comics. But of course, I didn't inherit those comics either, nor did I inherit my. Older Brothers, 1960s comics. And they had some from the 50s, too, because I've got pictures of them holding Space Mouse. But I've had to track those comics down, and I've tracked down those House of Mysteries with Dial H for Hero, and I've tracked down as many war comics from that time period from D.C. so I could kind of reclaim my rightful inheritance. You know, I just... So, anyway, I don't know. I know that all the comics were stored in my father's army foot locker one of his foot lockers so i have the foot locker but there's no comics in it anyway, i don't know well, no, they've gone invisible yeah they just did not um, and they had another foot locker filled with tonka trucks do you remember those yeah i mean they I were made yeah. like real trucks i mean you could hit right. someone over the head and kill them with a tonka yeah. truck yeah they were steel <laughs> Yeah, you could practically leave them outside and they'd be fine for, you yeah. know, don't do it for yeah, too it's long. like you but, leave, yeah. someone leaves an old truck in their front yard for 10 yeah. years. It's, you know, maybe a little rust, but it's still good to go. <laughs> uh, we've made Jesse miss his lunch or his dinner. Sorry, so. <laughs> Sorry Jesse. Oh. <laughs> well, that's good, though. We were, we were entertaining enough, so... <laughs> Oh, I do want to thank I Love Disney. I just received a message on here that uh, he subscribed to my channel, so I appreciate that. Good. Uh, and you probably saw where I was uh, highlighting it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've subscribed to your channel, but, man, I cannot get past, like, I'm, I'm at 452. It's so hard to get past that. And I've got, like, 1,200 people that subscribe on Instagram. I say, hey, everybody, go subscribe. But it's like... All day long, I get every hour. There's someone new subscribing on Instagram, but on it's like crickets on YouTube. And yeah. I, I guess more people use Instagram and are fascinated with the pictures scrolling. I think YouTube might maybe it's just the demographics are wrong. I, I do use Instagram, but it's it's more like a Facebook audience. Um, yeah. and the Facebook audience does not translate to. No, it's different to demographics. YouTube. And then some people think because it's the word subscribe that they're going to have to pay money to yeah. subscribe to your channel. They don't really understand it, how, how the new, all this stuff works. Uh, I don't know how many Coke Zeros Eric has had. I think three. 
Twilight how, Zone. Apparently two. on my second one. Okay. W wait, tell me about Coke Zero. Is that really unhealthy because it has like aspartame in it, or is it actually okay? No, this is um a couple years ago. I was told I was you know, on the borderline of being diabetic. So I said just okay. yeah, switch from Diet Coke to Coke Zero. So I did. So what's and the difference between Diet Coke and Coke Zero? There's no sugar in the let's see, zero sugar, zero calories, blah blah blah. Um, Diet Coke has sugar. And oh. when, I, when I went back to the doctor for the first time uh, about a month ago, my, my I'd lost weight and my blood levels, my sugar levels were down. So I was pretty much out of danger. So hmm. <clears throat> now the first couple ones I, I drank tasted like tab, which is cruel and unusual for anybody. Um, but once I got used to it, they're, they're fine. Hmm. And once you started putting rum in it, <laughs> uh, you know that uh, there was there was a time, but uh, I've I haven't had a drink since 1992. <laughs> okay, yeah, just because I don't remember 90 or 91. <laughs> so that it was more out of uh, <laughs> preservation than anything. Yeah. Uh, 90, 90. I don't think you missed anything except George Bush uh, raising taxes. I did miss the yeah. Reds' last World Series of my lifetime. <laughs> I'm told it was very, very entertaining, but turns out, game one, I was the only person maybe drunker than Marge. If you remember her, you know, post her pregame, she went out and made some kind of introduction, and she was lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, Michael's videos are taking off, lead paint. Yeah, that, that one there, I don't understand why that one is so much. I think somebody must have linked that on a very popular site somewhere. <laughs> it's the only thing I can figure out. Yeah, sometimes it's it's weird. Like Graphic Man had one that went exploded, and I think it might have been because he had that Wolverine from Days of Future Past. I don't know what it was. It was a good episode, but it wasn't that different from any other episode. And it went how many views? <laughs> Uh, about 950. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think a lot of it might be random because of the way the algorithms work. <coughs> yeah. Well, we were going into like a Memorial Day holiday. It had a picture of the X-Men, you know, uh, 141. And maybe, maybe somebody posted it on some, made a link to it. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It was nothing I did. Well, it was, the, it was the thumbnail. I'm sure people clicked on. I don't know if you if you could you know, see how long people stuck around. Yeah. Now, yeah. Steve from I Love Disney and Comics, he is from eh, a little bit north of me. So he's familiar with uh, the, the that dear lady, Marge Shaw. She, she basically had her team taken away from her. Now, one of the things she referred to... Um, Eric Davis says her million dollar. We don't need to say oh, yeah. what. <laughs> well, I remember when before Howard Stern turned into whatever he is now. I mean, yeah. I used to adore Howard Stern. He was really funny. He's changed into something completely different. Yeah. But he had Billy West on and he did this impression of Marge Shot, and he would just use all those words just the, the, I can't believe this stuff they got away with on the radio back then, but he would but she was very racist and would just, yeah, as I recall. What got, you know, yes and no. Marge was one of those women that had basically, well, she was German. Okay. So um, uh, she married a German, you know, shot. And I, I don't think she really ever had to do anything other than to just exist. Now she, you know, believe it or not, I mean, it's hard to, when you can, if you can picture what she ended up looking like. She was a very pretty woman when she was young, but yeah, you know, so she was probably, you know, got by her looks until those went south because she did like her drinky poo. <laughs> but she, what, what finally, what he finally had enough of her was, you know, and a friend of mine does a great impression. I won't do it justice, but it was like, you know, honey, that Hitler, he was an okay guy. He just went too far. <laughs> and they said, well, that's enough. Said, Time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, speaking of time to go, Spinner, do you need to leave to go have your dinner? Or Yeah, I'll probably run down and have some dinner. So. All right. Get get with me sometime when you get that video, and we'll practice it sometime when you can. And okay. We'll, we'll get it down to a science to okay. dazzle and impress all these fans that are watching. I don't know how dazzled they'll be, but <laughs> something different. All righty, guys. Well, good night. See you, Spinner. Dave, good to see you. Bye-bye. Take care. Yeah. And uh, I guess we should pull the plug here any minute now. Uh, oh, I wanted to say uh, go ahead, Michael. Uh, that uh, kind of harkens back to what we were talking about before with Frank Robbins. Uh, you know, I've softened to Frank Robbins on the invaders because, like Gratu says, he has a tinge of the Golden Age uh, style. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's very fitting on that. But it's it's really hard for me to deal with Frank Robbins on those fear issues that he did of Morbius. <laughs> that's that's tough to swallow, man. I just that was just eaten into my brain. And I just had to say something about it. I don't know why. You know, I remember those very well, and I know that Vince Coletta inked most of them. <laughs> and well, that has a lot to do with it, yeah. Well, actually, I said I think Vince Coletta actually helped frank robbins as long as the panels didn't show full bodies because if if it's just like your know, chest shots or whatever it it really didn't look that bad but yeah i, I see your point it, it was not a good fit especially no. since the first issue of that series the interiors were done by eli katz yeah. So and, and so, I mean, really, once you start at the pinnacle, what are you going to do? Right. Right, Micah. Exactly. There yeah. you go. <laughs> if only it had been inked by you know who. Yeah. Oh, that would have been. So that that, that might have been the first and last book you ever bought. How did this case. George Bell stuff get started? I. If you look at uh, Fantastic Four twenty five and twenty six. The, yeah, Hulk and, the, the Hulk and thing battle, and then the Avengers show up. Right. Yeah. Uh, George pretty much, I think, really tarnishes Kirby's drawings. Okay. Um, and he's consistently known as the world's worst inker. And uh, so because I have told the comic, the, the geeky puppet guys about that, Breen has taken it upon himself to defend George Bell every chance he gets, okay. even though... They know now that Eric doesn't really mean it when he comes to his defense. But. No, and I, you know, and I, yeah, I, I'm, I, it's more believable when I say that uh, George Bell is the Joe <laughs> Biden of inkers. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think his real name was George Russo's or something like that. Was but, it really? Because because he was, I mean, he was a decent artist in the Golden Age, but I guess yeah. he, was, he was getting he must have been getting pretty old. But I. <clears throat> that would kind of be disheartening to find and out that's who that was, but Kirby is fantastic, uh, especially in those first like ten issues of the Fantastic Four. But I I can say this in honesty: every now and then Kirby, I think he had a lot on his plate, and every now and then he may have made a drawing or two that uh, that he probably shouldn't have. And it didn't help that George Bell would come along and really muddy it up. Whereas somebody like a Dick Ayers or a Joe Sinnott would have probably smoothed and polished Kirby uh, to looking really good. George, unfortunately, wasn't a good fit. So like like Eric says, he might have been a great artist back in his, his real prime, but... Um, uh, unfortunately, he, he didn't do a very good job. You know, that, that actually kind of makes sense that it that it would have been somebody like a George Russo because at some point, I'm sure Stan had to call him into the office and say, it's over. Yeah, cause how do you tell us? Because it, it, you figure he had to be somebody at some point because there's <laughs> no way those could be your first efforts and, and not just get run. Uh, they are spouting the wisdom over here. Oh, and then, now that last one's fact. <laughs> yeah, that'll go to Froggy's head. <laughs> well, thank you, Meyer. Yeah, Don Heck. Uh, 
sometimes you're reading those Iron Man early, you know, tales of suspense. And Don's work could be a little. But Kirby said Don draws the best women. Well, Jack Kirby must have had an Asian fetish when Roz wasn't looking because everybody Don Heck drew looked Asian. Yeah. yeah. I always thought Don Heck was kind of just an an average guy that cranked out the work. You know, he phoned in a lot of that stuff in the Silver Age. Now, right. John Buscema in one of those interviews said he couldn't draw women. And then what he finally realized, he would draw a baby's head and that he would just age it so that it had big eyes. And it so that's how he <coughs> drew pretty women. He just kind of aged a baby's head. Um, anyway, you have to watch the interview. I look so that, like I, William Shatner. I'm shocked. Yeah. I need to grow that yeah. beard back. I looked that up. I, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to watch one of those tonight. That, that, that looks great. Yeah, I, 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 I know you won't I'm watch about. one like Pringles or whatever. You're going to watch yeah. the whole playlist and sleep to yeah. it. Yeah, you know? I, I said I really do regret not going up to some of these you know legends when they were at shows with no lines. You know, because I, I said if I had to do over again, I would have been all over those guys uh, figuratively. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about YouTube is people are interviewing the guys. Yeah. Not that I don't know who's really good now, but but who are the surviving? older guys maybe we need to like bring them on and our show and interview them and, and do what do our version of it like who are the sal and john but yeah you know, sal's 87 and ramita's in his 90s i doubt if we you know i Wait, doubt if they're still doing interviews ramita seniors alive yes oh i didn't know that uh -huh. someone should bring him on uh ramona fredone's alive uh, yeah she's is she's still alive she's comfortably into her 90s um, one of the like, like, yeah, like Joe Thanks, Gill or Joe Gill, one of those guys, like, one of those guys, is, wait a minute, no, they just did a um, like Don Pearl and still alive, and he just got a write up in um, Alter Ego, yeah. Um, but there's not many beyond that. Well, Alter Ego, and, and I don't know if Comics Journal's no longer, right? No, I don't think any of but, those other ones are. But they, they would do, Comics Journal would do these long interviews, so that's a good historical source. Yeah, I, th and I think Alter that's... Ego, they're doing, that Tomorrow's Publications is doing the Angel's work. Uh, oh, God. It's just I can't great. find the magazines any, you know, it's I got to get a subscription. <laughs> yeah, Everything think... Tomorrow's touches turns to gold. Yeah, I think it was a comics journal that I read like a 30 page interview with um, Max Gaines. Yes, I have that issue. Yeah. And he, he confesses towards the end that he was a Reagan guy. Yeah, but you never know it. Yeah. Well, he said, he goes, this will probably surprise you. Yeah. But it, it turns out he said you know, he is very socially liberal, very fiscally conservative. And yeah, his politics kind of mirrored mine at the time. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, I was mistakenly a hawk for a lot of years until I realized, you know, the folly of that. And back then, I'm sure after about five years of Reagan, uh, that would convince a lot of them that they'd probably say, "What, well, what are we thinking with this Mondale guy?" You know, but now I've just lost everybody under thirty in the crowd. Well, has no idea what, what we're talking about. <laughs> I, I, Mad seemed very left wing in the early seventies to the point where my mother, sure, you know, my dad in the army. She did. She. I remember there was the cover with the White House. And it was a photograph, and it had the gate, and it said, "This country is out of order." And she says, "You will not buy that." She was like, "That's disrespectful to our country." And of course, they were selling it on an army base in the bookstore. But um, you know, our, our the country was out of order. But I don't know if. You know, if you look back at Watergate, <clears throat> it was absolutely nothing compared to what Biden and Hunter Biden. And only now, uh, you know, Elon Musk is about to release all the information of how Twitter hid that like a week or two before the election that would have shown that he's a, a Chinese asset. And it's it's unbelievable the stuff on that. I, the videos that I don't know what was maybe parlor. If you went to that, which they've gotten rid of, 
but they had all this footage from his laptop. It was horrific. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, Marquis de Sade stuff. Well, I think, I, I don't know if it, to be believed or not, but apparently the EU has already threatened to ban Twitter. Yeah. If he doesn't go back to Jack Dorsey level censorship. They're, yeah. they're scared, aren't they? They are. I've been having a blast on Twitter. But he also right? said that he met with Tim Cook and said, oh, yeah, Cook assured him that he never considered taking it off the Apple, yeah, out of the Apple store. So um, make of that what you will. That was from Elon. So, well, you know, it's becoming more and more clear how much in bed they are with basically Satan. I mean, well, just, you can't really go, it's no other way to say it. They're all just, uh, a bunch of satanic, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's disconcerting to say the least when you realize how, especially if you are not on that side of it, you know, it's, it's, you don't even realize you're being censored when you have the set of approved opinions that they do. And then they just say, well, it's a private company. Why can't they censor it's a private company? And of course, but that's how we communicate. You know, you can say, well, the electric company is a private company. Why can't they just shut off your power when it's 18 degrees? It's a private company. They can do whatever they want. You know, that's just the, I mean, they're the fascists. So anyway. That comment by Jackson there was uh, words of wisdom. You had it up there a second ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It took a while to get upset and spread the word back in the good old days. Yeah. But Watergate was nothing. You look back and, and Nixon was trying to get out of the Vietnam War. It's the Democrats that have always wanted war. It was Johnson that got us in. Nixon was trying to get us out somewhat honorably. But, you know, it was just like, I don't know. And Democrats were a different animal when Kennedy, I mean, of course, they got rid of Kennedy. He was not going along with the war plans. And they tried to get Reagan. Uh, well, you, you know, you're, you're right. Your yeah, graphic about how long it took for things to, information to you know, get out there. Think how long it took for people to realize how great Gil Kane was as an artist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to, and trying Tony Tallarico to was. <laughs> Some of us still haven't got the message, right, Eric? <laughs> well, Why aren't you on Tony a Express where you are? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't we on a hate campaign against Tony Tallarico? Let Gil Kane be. Is he still alive? Who? Gil Kane. Kane. No, he no. died 20 years ago. Oh, okay. Well, Tony Tallarico, is he still alive? I think he might have died. I only checked. That guy's the worst artist I've ever seen. I mean, worse than Riley Rosmo? I don't know who that is. Look him up sometime. He's oh, look <clears throat> he's the one that draws the new gay Tim Drake, and everybody just prances around oh, on his tippy toes. Know. And but he's he's just he's oh how knowing that that guy gets a paycheck for producing this work is kind of galling. Actually, say his name again. <laughs> Riley Rosmo. R O S S M O. That's a and, real name? Yeah, put Riley Rossmo, Tim Drake. Oh, boy, are you going to see some art. Oh, I think I've seen that crap from when I was at the... Okay, art. Riley it, Rossmo art. His new boyfriend looks like Aunt May from the Spidey XD cartoon. Uh, Goodness. Is, it, is this his art? This, this kind of stuff looks like it's from a... Oh, that... that, that that's... If that is, that's Neil Adams esque compared to what he is now. All right, well, let me let me hit images. If you, I say if you, anything from the Tim Drake series, it's just wait. This look. Oh, well, I don't know. This Wonder Woman looks a little mannish, but I I don't necessarily hate it. Well, oh, can't see it. Well, okay, but let's find his. Uh... Oh, he's definitely gotten more cartoony, more stylized, and. More Tumblr esque. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I have seen the the Tim Drake stuff. Some the one where where Bernard's sneaking up behind him and touching him, and he's and, and he oh. l literally looks like a fifties housewife eking from a mouse. 
Okay, I see what you're talking about. They have uh, they have these giant uh, wide open anime mouths, manga yeah. mouths. Oh, yeah. that's Rico. terrible. Yeah, let me look up Tony Tallarico real quick. Well, I, I'm with you on Tallarico, Gratu. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> I can't stand his art. Well, first, let's see if he's still alive, because he might be watching this, in which case I, he's probably a very nice guy. I yeah. shouldn't be so mean to him. He but. could be, but his art is terrible. I'm right. I'm honest about he, it. he is. Uh, let's see if he's alive. Uh, no, no, he died. Oh, yeah, he, that's right. I did it on my show. He passed away in January of this year. Um, but, I mean, he's famous for doing this first African-American, uh, like, Western or hero comic, Lobo. But he's also the guy that did those Dell Dracula and Frankenstein as superhero comics, which are yeah. probably actually good compared to the normal. He's cashing in on LBJ, but his, but these are actually good examples of his art, even though they're terrible. Let's see. What Meyer says here about uh, Howard uh, uh, is over a year ago, I brought up to the early group of fossils, hey, let's uh, go over bad artists. And I did a little presentation on why I think Kane is overrated. And uh, the other fossils didn't really join me in that. And so, but it looks like uh, Gratu could be the uh, expert on Tony. And yeah. <laughs> Meyer could be the expert on Howard here. Sometimes, if this is his art, it's not too bad when he, when he actually paints. You know, I, I, I don't think that's too bad. And then there was one of Quasimodo that I saw that I think might have been on the cover of the Charlton Here, Monster World. Who's this, Eric? That is that's a guy. That's Tim. That's Tim Drake's yo know, boyfriend. Oh, and here no, they no. are, you know, together forever. He's now gay in the TV show too, because it's now a <laughs> you know in the Titans show. Oh yeah, he was he was yeah. he was yeah making out with Bernard and that. <laughs> We're behind in that, but that show oh, is dear. that show is pretty perverse. I mean, we watch it, but it's based on a children's comic, and they make it as perverse as they possibly can. Even though it's somewhat close to the comic, I remember this. Shit. <laughs> shoot, I'm sorry. I remember this comic. It's like a Thor knockoff that. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I yeah, think it's actually enjoyable, though. Uh, but that's Tony Tallarico, too. You know, I, yeah. you know, I, I understand your frustration uh, with now the I know. and with the live action, but you know, they're they're not going to do they're not going to do things for us that like them that way. <laughs> it, it, it's just just not a wide enough audience. But the fact that just because some woman that doesn't like comics with an agenda that DC was only too happy to go along with. They took a character who had been straight, had had multiple girlfriends for 30 years, and not only made him gay, made him, quote-unquote, a mincing twink, yeah. and now he prances through his own book, and he's prancing through the Titan show. Mm. That he's, 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 not even, he's not even a good representation of a gay character. He's a yeah. caricature of a gay character. He's and they don't give him a personality. He is only <coughs> that one aspect. His personality is gay. Yeah. That's, what can you tell me about It's gay? very disrespectful to yeah. me, to gay people, to just, like, that's all he is. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not like we don't know he, what kind of music he likes. I mean, the other characters are more well-rounded, the, the Dick Grayson, the Beast Boy, or whatever they call him in the show, you know. Gays in comics are... Feminists' version of their gay bestie, all of them, and the ones that weren't like the, the the masculine gays, like Apollo and Midnighter, are never used. Was negative? Has Negative Man been made gay in the comic, or is that only? Oh, in the I'm TV sure he's. Show? I'm sure he's gay in the comics now. It, it, but, they, but they it started to, in the TV show. Yeah, because the actor that played him is gay. Why can't a gay character play a straight guy? Why? Why is that? Um, yeah, that's all learned. No, it was that's a chance. Like, it was a chance to make another character gay, and that's kind of the agenda. Yeah, of of, and Disney just some movie just tanked because that's mm -hmm. the only thing they advertised about. It's some new cartoon, and uh, 
So I, I don't know. It's just that's what doomed the Eternals for for a year. All we knew about it was two guys kiss. We didn't and know they anything every, about. Yeah. They changed every and, and pl- that was nothing like the comic. No, and the comic was something that no one liked. Well, I mean, I said, people yeah, like yeah. the Kirby art. <laughs> it was never a popular comic. It was no, no one cared there, about it. If there was ever a property that you could basically make wholesale changes to and no one would notice, it was the Eternals. Yeah. Now done properly, it could have captured some of that Marvel magic and without a pandemic. But, but like I said we that's literally all we knew for a year. We had no idea who these people were. Yeah. And, you know, the Guardians have proven that you can take unknown characters and make a billion dollars if you do it right. And what they've done, what, now, I know the old Guardians of the Galaxy the, from the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. I've seen, you know, on the newsstands, the new Guardians of the Galaxy before the movie came out. And then I picked up some of those newer comics. I get, you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems like the movie version could be better than the comics. Is that correct or wrong? The the um, Abnett and Lanning Guardians from 2005 to like 2009 or whatever, that, that whole cosmic storyline they did, no. The okay. movie Guardians are infinitely better than anything that's been done post that. I mean, I think he's such a good filmmaker, despite his Twitter idiocy. Oh, yeah. That, and I don't know if you've seen the Christmas special. I thought it was brilliant. It came out about this time last week. I've heard, I've heard good things about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, it, yeah. I know. It's like I said. It, I if you read some of that stuff that they did in that that time period. I think you might even like some of it. Well, I, I'm sure that I would, but what I'm trying to say is he's such a good filmmaker that I think he takes, and now he's in charge of DC Comics yeah. on film, I think he can take something and make it even better on film. Oh, and yeah. I like the Peacemaker comics and and and, and the... Uh, um, his is uh, the 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 other guy. Uh, my mind's gone. Uh, uh, vigilante. Vigilante character, but those characters, as I recall, were he. What he did is he took those characters and made them just so much fun on television. I think what he does is he takes things and makes it fun. It may not be respectful to their origins of the character. But it looks like the character, and it's just an amazing amount of fun, despite whatever perversity he may want to put in it. Like in, in the comics, up the guy's crotch or something. It's just so much fun. And so if he does that with the DC movies, Marvel's just going to writhe away um, like they have the last few years. And it's such a shame that's happening. But I think he could do great. I don't well, know. Part of how he got to that was part of that Abnett <laughs> Landing series there was a lot of tongue in cheek in that, um, but not so much that it lapsed into just becoming a farce of itself. I mean, they had they had a Russian talking dog, who I always like better than you know, he's Rocket. The, he's he's prominent in the Christmas special, so I guess he'll be in the new movie, the the Russian dog. Yeah, yeah. It, it talks. It's got this little yeah. childlike laugh and everything. It's like mentally talking. And I think I, I'm pretty sure they created that character for the books. I know Rocket Raccoon had been around since the yeah. early '70s, um, or m- I guess mid to late '70s, in whatever magazine that was in first. For those that are watching, uh, they may not be familiar with our Frank Robbins talk. There's a great cover, but that's not Frank Robbins. No, <laughs> but this is frank and uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> it looks like a, a muppet a good... uh red skull looks like a muppet but i i think it's fun it does have a feeling of like you're reading a 1940s comic yeah oh by the way you got some dating bot in the chat but it's, oh, it's not okay. it's not pornographic but it's annoying yeah they always like to show up when i'm busy <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Anyway, <laughs> the older the older I get, I can handle that. Uh, yeah, I, I know but, it was weird in the 70s because there's so much great art. And, and I tell you, I can't get over. I was just thinking about this in the shower this morning is looking at a, a, like 1975, 76, looking at it like a detective comics with that Ernie Chan art or Ernie Chua, whatever. It's like I remember just the colors and it just his art was so great when he was with DC. And then he, of course he later went to Marvel. But I loved his art and people talk about him enough. Um, he, he to me that was a bright spot of the mid seventies. Seeing that art, uh, there's one cover, the Detective Comics, and they had the old logo. And there's like I think a redhead in a slinky dress, kind of like a Jessica Rabbit type, and Batman's on the ground. Do you remember that cover? Four fifty six. It was the first. It was that was one of, also one of the top first ten books ever. The first week I bought another, new comics that was out. There's another one with like Batman coming down, and there's some guy kind of like a dead shot type guy, like about to shoot up at him. And the skyline behind them is just be beautiful colors going. You know what that one is? You probably know the number of that one. I don't. Um, because I remember the one where there's the dead body, and Alfred and Bruce is saying, You gotta take the rap for me, Alfred. <clears throat> What was the what was the number of that one detective comics? Four fifty six, and that's about what seventy five, seventy six. Uh, it's February seventy six is the cover month. Okay, I, I that's my first week. I I will remember that to the day I die. No, it, it's not that I have a photographic memory. It's that we moved so much when I was in elementary school that I could remember something like I I saw that in a spinner rack when we first moved to Arlington. So I know when that is. I know. You know, if something's 75, 76, I was in fifth grade in Tacoma, Washington. So I can associate the comics with where I was living at the time. And then I have a year. So that's, it's not, what was it for? Okay. 456. Just, yeah, okay. Well, well, I said, that first year, I remember everything. I mean, you could, you could hold up a comic. I could tell you the, the number. And while Groutu's looking up that, Jackson Roy Kirk, if you stopped the invaders at issue four, you missed a couple of Hitler covers coming up. And then they ran into Thor on oh, the yeah. cover. So that you those are pretty cool books. I mean they're good stories. Yeah, yeah. So you might want to you might want to go back and double check some of that. I had a friend that used to collect only covers that had Hitler on them. And I told him, Hey, maybe you shouldn't tell too many people that you do right. that. Right. <laughs> but uh that's maybe not a good thing, uh, but a golden age, silver. So whenever that oh, he yeah. would buy it, he did. He didn't care about. It. He's like these key issue idiots that only buy key issues and slab them. He only if if it didn't have him on the cover, he didn't care about any other issue in the run. <laughs> so that's kind of disturbing. So. Yeah, because uh, you know <laughs> when you pass away and they go through all your stuff, they go, man, this guy really liked. It. He passed away, but I think everybody figured out pretty quick from his possessions. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, you just see these covers, you know, as you scroll through my yeah. comic. I'm trying to find that one issue of my on mycomicshop.com here. Is it uh, anyway? Yeah, there's the one I was talking about. That one, brilliant oh. cover. I mean, that's just like that rivals okay. Will Eisner. You know. Um, yeah, a thirteen-year-old me didn't mind that cover at all. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch where, where rats are eating Batman alive. That's like we, we've, we've discovered we have a couple of mice running around. We're gonna have to get rid of and uh oh. So that's uh, so and I see in, in the walls are you seeing them? In the uh, walls or in the walls or in, on, you know, no, they're just little mice running around, you know, just on the floor, you know, upstairs in the attic where we sleep, you know, so, so get I, Pete on that. You have uh, yeah, cats, Pete's, you? Pete, what I've done is I've opened up the, the cats were all confined to the basement. I've opened up the door. They now have free run, but Pete does. Pete's getting kind of elderly. He doesn't go much. He's mm -hmm. gone up to the first, the second floor. And, and Alan's gone up to the third floor, but no one's gone up to the fourth floor. This is the cover I was talking about. Um, the back, the colors in the background. Oh, yeah. just beautiful. Okay. I don't know who that character, I was calling him Dead Black Shot. Spider. Black Spider. Okay. Yeah. 
just beautiful. It looks better in person. <coughs> yeah, I think it's a uh, Detective 416, uh, the Kaluta cover, but interior Frank Robinson. I probably mentioned it before. And as a kid, I had a coverless copy. And in that, Batman runs into this guy who cheats at Russian roulette and gets all these guys to, you know, kill themselves. But uh, so Batman's playing against this guy. And it's kind of a weird book for a kid to be reading about, you know, holding a gun to your head. But uh, that, that was my first Frank Robbins uh would that have been 452 or 3? Or did you say 416? I thought it was 416. For some reason, that number's in my head. But oh, yeah, I know four, it, okay, 452 was where the, where the yeah. guy tells Batman if he wants to live or whatever, he's got to pick up the gun and shoot it. But in because remember, Batman supposedly never touches a gun oh, unless yeah. the story oh, calls for him to touch a gun. Yeah. <laughs> no, he had this thing down to where the guy, he was on the sixth shot and you know if you know anything about Russian roulette if you've already pulled five times and you haven't found the bullet well guess what here it comes <laughs> so Batman knew the guy was cheating so that has stuck with me all these years so. it's unbelievable they have Russian roulette in a children's comic you yeah. know because it's yeah. so obviously <clears throat> imitatable you know oh yeah I mean I, I wouldn't want to be the editor, you know, and then some kid does that and then it's like, well, they read about it in this oh shoot, you know. Well, here's how innocent I was. I didn't think a thing about it when I was a kid. Then you get older and you go, Wow, I really read that. Oh my goodness, you know. Yeah. I turn into a parent and I start yeah. worrying about, you know, my kids. So. It's amazing when you look back in, in, in retrospect at the stuff we read and how much how many demons they were pushing at us, yeah, yeah. you know, and you're, you're a very religious guy and you realize all, you know, the all these demons, the defenders for the last like 50 issues was just a yeah. devil comic. Every issue was deep. Half the care half That's the right. defenders were demonic and they were always fighting. De it was like, and it's, it was all because of the, the, you know, the zeitgeist with the exorcist, sure. Rosemary's baby, Omen. Yeah. But you know, now we realize Earth. that all these politicians are worshiping Moloch and they're praying mm -hmm. and, and all this stuff with this company, Balencia, whatever, and their weird perversion. And it's like, you realize this is what's ruling us. Yeah. And, you know, Satan is what the prince of the world. This is uh, what is that you know, like kind of rules our dimension. And so you realize, gosh, we were really being uh, heavily. Uh, you know, they were pushing this stuff on us as kids, but we somehow survived and we think it's funny and we love it, but it was still a little creepy what they were doing to us as kids. You know, all this, all this house of mystery secrets covers with the, the, the yeah. pentagrams and the candles is like, wow. Yeah. We also had parents that were involved in our lives. True. True. Yeah. True, yeah. true, true, yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, you just have to separate it, you know, and uh, yeah. try to have fun with the lighter side of it and not take it seriously. Yeah, the and, people and, that go off the deep end and start trying to live that stuff are the ones that have the problem. And, and, and back in those days, the people that were doing the most complaining about it were people we agreed with politically. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, it's amazing how they, they say the parties have changed. No, but in that regard, they absolutely have done a one eighty. It's, um, I said, it, well, it's, I remember when when it was Democrats, you know, it was um, uh, what's her face uh, that was le leading the PMRC, the vice president's wife. What was her uh, name? Tipper Gore. Tipper Gore was the one leading the crusade against heavy metal. You know, she was the main one. Uh, her, one her bugaboo was rap. I thought it was heavy metal. Well, yeah, she, it was. Well, she, she's the, she's the one that got the parental and, advisory stickers put yeah, on CDs. Yeah, but, which but Twisted Sister had to go to bat against him, so it was it, was, it spilled over to other things. And speaking that. of people that have become absolutely the establishment, right? Because he's all you know, he's all yeah. Because exactly. uh, yeah, I said um, like, Trump's using my song. I don't approve of that. That's well, he, oh, that's that's tame for what because he, I mean, he just goes off the deep end, and his his son, who looks like a wanted poster, <laughs> is actually conservative does work with um Wes from thinking critical and i like him because he says he likes me so it's, <laughs> but he's nothing like his dad 
which is yeah. which is weird. It's usually, like I said, the other way around. But yeah, he, he, D. Snyder's a sixty-five. I mean, he's like he's like Howard Stern level. Yeah, NPC yeah, they were buddies. Point. I remember they were buddies when I used to listen to that show. Yeah. But yeah, it's no, but uh, you know, I I know there's a whole lot of rappers that hopefully kicked back some money to Tipper Gore because she made a bunch of rappers millionaires because yeah. the parental advisory sticker you couldn't but once those took off you couldn't give away a rap cd without one yeah just like uh, you couldn't make any money unless your movie was pg and then when they came out with pg-13 you had to figure out a way to get your movie to be pg-13 because the kids would figure that it's not cool to watch a PG or a G rated movie. You got to throw in a couple of curse words to get it up to that level. I can't find G anywhere. And they don't make G movies. Yeah. Anymore. Graphic. Can you make me a moderator so I can kick Jackson out? <laughs> He's our best fan though. <laughs> well, I, I think they make movies about the life of Christ and their PG. Of course, passion of the Christ was R of course for violence, but you know, it's like, you know, even biblical movies are yeah. rated up there. You know. Jambo would cry if we kicked out. I think Jambo would support me on that. Well, <laughs> I think he's grown on them, though. So. Hey, awesome. On that note, we better wrap it up tonight. <laughs> uh, but uh, those has been great. I, I enjoy it very much. But uh, <coughs> I have to get up early in the morning. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Jambo's not here. He wishes he could be. So, And... Uh, Tune in next uh, time. We'll probably have twice as many good fossils. Um, it can't keep a good fossil down. So, and maybe they'll be uh, out of trouble with their parole officers by then. So <laughs> they'll be able to join us. So on behalf of uh, everybody in the in the chat, we we thank you guys for showing up. Uh, it's good to see Michael Dodd. Uh, we'd like to keep, squeeze him in a little more often, but we just get so full, and it's because of. Our great fans of the fossils, we thank you all. <coughs> and I'll catch one more comment before we... Oh, yes. Jackson Roy Kirk will let you have the last word. So on that, we'll say good night and uh, happy drawing. Good night, kids. Good night. There hey. we go. Well, you were delaying.